Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto inherited the ultimate storm release of Wind and Thunder God. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was nighttime in the village hidden in the leaves and a boy with sun-kissed hair and bright orange clothes was reaching out to his teacher, brother, father figure Aruka Amino. Why? Because a giant shuriken was flying towards him about to pierce his chest. Aruka Sensei. A bright flash followed by a loud clash sounded off and next thing everyone sees is Naruto with smoking hands and the ashes of the giant shuriken on the ground in front of Aruka. A moment of silence was in the clearing until it was broken by the blonde who spoke in a confused tone. D did I do that? He looked toward Aruka to see him with wide eyes looking back at him. And Naruto why you just shot lighting? Mizuki in shock at what happened looked at Naruto with shock. He shook his head and shouted at the blonde. I don't care what you shot I'm still going to kill you and Aruka, he screamed with rage in his eyes. Naruto, knocked out of shock by Mizuki's outburst, hardened his gaze and responded. For your crimes against the leaf you shall die today. As he says that he makes a cross sign with his fingers and shouts shadow clone jutsu next thing everyone sees is a massive cloud of smoke and 1000 clones in bright orange with serious faces with arms out. Now die, they all say in unison sending chills through Mizuki's body. They all shoot lightning blasts out from their hands and the screams of Mizuki echo through the whole clearing for 5 minutes straight. When Naruto was finally done there was nothing left of the traitor, not even ashes. Naruto hunches over and pants heavily then notices Uruka still with wide eyes. Uruka sensei are you okay do you need me to help you with anything? This finally snaps him out of his daze. Naruto close your eyes for a sec. The blonde responds. I don't know how that will help you but okay. Okay you can open your eyes now Naruto. He did so only to notice Uruka was missing his headband and he reached to his forehead only to feel metal and soft cloth. He shed a couple tears and gave Uruka a hug. Thank you Uruka, for everything you've always been there to help me even when no one else would. You're the only person plus the Ichirakus to know my real self. This causes Uruka to smile warmly. So does that mean you will stop hiding yourself from everyone and step into the dark side, this causes them both to chuckle. A squad of Anbu appear out of nowhere and an Anbu with a cat mask and purple hair walks forward. Uzumaki-san, Amino-san the Hokage wishes to speak with you. This causes Uruka to sigh and Naruto to scowl. Next the Anbu walks up to them and places a hand on their shoulder and Shunshin away. Thank you Anbu you can leave us now. Yes Hokage-sama, with that they all leave, allowing him to focus his attention on the duo in front of him. Naruto-kun the scroll please. He asks with a kind smile which pisses Naruto off. Naruto throws the scroll at him aggressively which causes Anbu to come out and point their weapons at him. We have a lot to talk about old man unbothered by the four Anbu with weapons at him. Yes we do Naruto-kun Anbu leave us, so what do you want to ask first? When did you plan on telling me I had the nine-tailed fox seal inside of me? He says with an angry face leaking little amounts killing intent out but enough for both of the men to know he is serious. Hirazen Serutobi was an old man who has seen two wars along with the nine-tailed fox but yet a child of only twelve has made him nervous with just his look that reminded him of another red-head woman who gave him the same look, he could have sworn he saw a ghostly image of her behind the boy but he shook it off. Naruto-kun I was going to tell you when you were sixteen or a chunin, he responded in a straight tone. This causes Naruto to release a low growl. When I'm sixteen or chunin are you kidding me, I already failed three times and I'm thirteen. You should have told me when I wanted to become a ninja or maybe even when I asked you why everyone hates me. Don't even tell me this was a secret when the whole village knew about it except me. He screams releasing even more ki enough to make the Hokage sweat and Aruka to gasp in shock. Naruto-kun you have to understand it was for your own saw. Don't even say safety. The villagers would still break into my house and beat but no what do you say. The villagers are just confused and angry right now, forgive them. No they didn't forgive me for something I didn't even do so I will not forgive them and if they want to try to hurt me again. They will be put down for attacking a ninja off the leaf, through this declaration his eyes turn red for a moment enough for only the Hokage to notice and fear that the seal was breaking. You owe me old man, the old Hokage just sighs sadly and gives into his demands. Fine Naruto-kun what is it you want? 
I want to you get your act together and start acting like a Hokage and not some helpless old man who gives in to anyone's demands, you run the village not anyone else. This causes a little fire to come back to the old fire shadow. I also want you to postpone the team selections for a week so I can have time to master my new strange power. It's called a bloodline you would know that if you were not sleeping in class, Aruka says with a cheeky smile on his face. This causes a tick mark to appear to Naruto's head. Naruto then turns and gives Aruka a foxy smile that unnerves him a bit. Crispy Aruka coming up. Naruto put out his hands and blast Aruka which cause him to scream out in pain and bright lights in the Hogake office which makes the old man and Anbu sweat drop. Now old man just tell me a secret training ground to train in and I will be back sometime later, which causes bigger sweat drops to appear. Right, training ground 44 but be careful it is dangerous and is called the forest of death. Don't worry nothing can stop this ninja from becoming the best, this caused the old man and slightly smoking Aruk to smile. Well off I go to see this forest, he shouts jumping out the window in nothing but his orange pants. A tick mark appears on the old man's head. I hope this does not become a habit of his like someone else I know. You know I think I should have listened to the old man this place is dangerous, I've already killed a giant bear, three tigers and is that a snake? What Naruto sees is a snake the size of a two-story house. Without thinking, Naruto runs up a tree to get a better vantage point. And indeed what he sees is a giant brown snake with black diamonds going down its back and yellow eyes that scream bad vibes, but if there is one thing Naruto is a coward he is not so he makes a cross sign with his fingers and shouts shadow clone jutsu. A puff of smoke and a clone of Naruto is next to him. Okay buddy let's send this snake packing, they raise their hands to the sky and let out a mighty roar and a huge bolt of lightning strikes the snake causing mass damage and crater 20 feet wide and 3 inches deep destruction. Ha we showed that snake didn't we, we sure did boss. But before they could celebrate too much a kanai to the clone's head and it puffs in smoke while another slices his cheek letting some blood fall. Someone appears behind him pressing something soft against his head pushing his body against the women if he had to guess, then a voice follows. That was pretty awesome Gaki you really did a number on this area and you even beat my snake with one strike. I think that deserves a reward she says in a flirty tone while licking blood off his cheek which makes him blush much to the mystery women's amusement. WWW what are you doing lady let me go, no 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 that's not how you ask for things is it, she says in a wistful way. Can you please let me go miss? He says still blushing. No I don't think so you'll be my little pillow for tonight and you're already undressed. Should I follow your lead? She says teasing him even more. Wait, I don't even know your name. He says turning red from the woman. Right I'm Anko Mitarashi, she says in a cheerful tone. I I am Naruto Uzumaki, he says still blushing finally wiggling out of her grasp. Finally able to see her and what he sees makes him blush even more. Anko is an average sized woman, with light brown pupil less eyes. A young woman who was a slender frame made for speed and dodging while still keeping her womanly charms which she has a lot of. D cup breast and a beautiful heart shaped face, and smile similar to his. Beautiful, Naruto whispers out in shock of what he sees which cause Anko to blush. Naruto turns around red faced embarrassed at himself for saying that out loud. Anko in shock, a 13 year old she just met compliments gave her a more heartfelt compliment than the village has in years. Oh yeah my plushie for the night, she walks up behind him and grabs him by the waist and snuggles against his whiskers which causes him to purr. They both pause and look at each other eyes wide. Kawaii you're going to be my little fox plushie for life, she says pushing his head into her valley. Fox plushie not surprised she knows about the fox but plushie for life I don't mind if I can stay in her no no I am not a pervert. Naruto jumps out of her arms red faced with his fist up in a fighting stance. If you want me you'll have to take me dead, bring it on Gaki you are gonna regret that. They disappear in a comical cloud of smoke punching, kicking, and biting, and a few lighting bolts. A few seconds later Anko is standing with a shirtless Naruto over her shoulder with swirls in his eyes, while she has her ponytail frizzled thanks to the lighting bolts. Ha Gaki will never beat me, let's get him back to my place so we can cuddle. Ya know for a kid who's 13 he has a nice body I mean look at his six pack and lean body kukuku he'll be a lady killer in a few years better get him while I can. We find our blonde hero in a position many men of the village would kill for just to even be in for a little nap. Naruto has his head on the chest of Anko Mitarashi with a stupid smile on his face and a hand on her left breast. 
This was the best sleep I've ever had, and when did I get new pillows they feel so soft and, firm, let me feel it again. Squeeze. A moan followed, since when did pillows make noise? Better yet it sounded like a moan. Naruto-kun I didn't know you were so grabby so early in the morning, his eyes widened in horror as he remembered the events of last night. He shot up like a man possessed, eyes still wide with a red face. Anko-san I am sorry I didn't mean to grab your holy objects you call breast, I mean your soft chest, I mean I mean. He was cut off by the laughter of the woman in bed with nothing but a white tank top that could barely keep her chest hidden in purple panties. Plushy kun you don't have to be so formal with me just call me Anko Chan okay? Oh okay, he says still red face from her state of dress. Anko Chan. Why do you live in this dangerous forest and not in the village like everyone else? He asked with a tilt of his head that reminded her of a fox kit and made her want to put his head in her breast again. Well that's because I'm just like you in a way. The village also hates me and doesn't accept me so I've just moved in here and only invite my little friends that I have here. She replies with a sad smile that makes his heart clinch. But why? You seem like a nice person to me although you may be a little crazy and lack clothes. The blonde says blushing at her body again. Anko can't help but give him a smile at his answer. We just met and I all but kidnapped him and he still says I'm a nice person. Ha! Huh? Stupid little gaki. They hate me because of a seal like you, something my old teacher Orochimaru gave me. She said with clear anger. That makes Naruto notice a mark on her shoulder. Is this the mark you were talking about? He says pointing at it. This makes Anko place a hand over it in defense. Naruto sits next to her on the bed and gives her a smile that warms her heart. Anko Chan, I will help you get rid of it, just let me take a look at it and try to help you. Anko moves her hand to give him a look, and he recognizes it as a seal, but that's all he knows. Anko Chan, I promise that I will get better at seals and beat that snake shit up for you then I'll unseal it and then you won't have to live with it anymore. He says with raw determination. This caused the pineapple hair woman to smile warmly at our blonde. Well thank you Gaki if you do that I'll give you a reward you are sure to remember. This causes Naruto to blush but he does something bold. Well I better get to it if I want that reward Habiheim. He says with a wink that makes Anko blush and surprised at the same time. But she regains her composure and smiles devilishly. Ah Naru Takun am I rubbing off on you already? She says, pushing his head in her breast and whispers in his ear. Which makes him shiver in pleasure, fright, and, excitement. Aa Anko Chan I think you are but. I kind of like it, he says smiling at her. That's my plushie fall onto the dark side with me. She says rubbing against his cheek. They both have a good laugh at that. Okay Anko Chan let's get up and eat and then you can train me, he says getting up only to blush at his state of dress. Quadruple A where are my pants and why am I still shirtless? Anko can only sweat drop. He just now notices that. What a baka. Anko thinks with a sweat drop. Your clothes are being washed and why would I train you? Well you are pretty strong, I can sense it and I want to learn under the great snake lady of the forest. Actually it's the Y and single Anko Mitarashi. She says with her hands in the air and a grin on her face. Oh I see, should I come up with a cool intro as well? That way everyone can know how cool I am. Yes you should, it's something we will work on while I train you. She says nodding her head like a great sage would. So that means you will train me Anko Chan that's so cool. He says giving her a big smile and a hug. Ah Naruto kun you can't keep your hands off me can you? She says in a teasing tone. Naruto blushes and hides in her breast. Causing her to laugh at him. We find the dynamic duo out in the forest of death getting ready to train till the sun goes down. Okay we will train until you go back to the academy for your team selection and then your sensei will help you with the rest. She says a little sad but trying to hide it with her smile but Naruto picked up on it and saved it for later. Okay Anko sensei, he says finally in clothes but not his he is wearing black jogging pants with black ninja sandals and a white tank top and a tan trench coat just like Anko much to her happiness. Okay plushie make 10 clones and send them to the library under Henge and have them focus on seduction, stealth, combat, and torture. Another 10 to climb trees and have them practice tree walking. I saw you did it yesterday but that was because you were under pressure I want it perfect. How do you know the secret to the shadow clones? It was in the scroll of sealing. A bastard Orochimaru maybe but a good teacher he was, she says with reluctancy. 
now me and you will spar until one of those clones brings back a scroll for taijutsu you may like. Okay Anko Sensei, Shadow Clone Jutsu. A puff of smoke and twenty clones were in the clearing. You heard the lady let's get to it, he shouts at copies of himself. Yes boss. And off the clones were. What now Anko Sensei? He turns to her with a raised eyebrow. Now you and I will fight, she says, releasing Jonin levels of ki at him which makes him sweat a lot. Why are you releasing that much ki at me? It's to let you know I'm serious and get you used to this because when you fight with other ninjas they are going to release much more because they will be coming to kill you. He shakes his head and hardness his gaze getting ready to train seriously. Okay Anko Sensei I am ready to get this started. He says with cold blue eyes and electrified voice which, gives Anko shivers of what she has no idea. Without wasting any time they charge at each other. Naruto throws a straight punch that Anko dodges easily and hits him in the ribs hard making him wince. But that does not stop him he turns aiming a hook to her left side but she ducks down and rises up and gives him an uppercut sending him in the air and she jumps after him and gives him a falling dropkick which he barely evades. Wow Anko sensei that hurts and you're really fast, I can barely see you, he says with a busted lip and dirt on his face and clothes. Anko gives him a foxy smile and says, well I am a special Jonin and I didn't get here just because of how good I look, she replies with pride in her voice. But I am not even going all out on you should be able to get by with me at this speed, she says falling in her hubby style and Naruto drops into a style with his left hand to his nose and right hand hovering over his stomach and legs spread. Then Naruto charges at her with a speed of that of a high chunin and hits that sting a little to her skin. He comes in with a right leg kick but she blocks and swings him over to a tree but he flips in mid air and bounce off the tree back at her with a cocked back right fist they clash in a small shock wave that blows their hair and ruffles the leaves on the trees a bit. Not bad Gaki you put some strength behind that one, Anko replies with a grin. One that Naruto matches. Well these muscles came from somewhere, I did a lot of physical activity in my free time. He replies with that smirk that looks like a fox but little does he know a giant red eye with a black slit is watching behind a cage. After the clash the two jump back and run at each other again. Anko throws a left punch and Naruto blocks with his right elbow only to have to block a right hook with his left elbow left, he throws a high right kick but she blocks and they both jump back to gain space. Only to run at each other again and clash punches but it is broken by a clone of Naruto who swings at Anko but she doges to the left and throws a left kick and dispels it. Only for the real Naruto to fly in with a hammer fist to knock her down but she sidesteps and throws a barrage of kicks that all at Naruto and leave him on the grounds gasping. Not bad Naruto-kun but dodge these. Hidden shot out snake hands. A bunch of snakes come out of her sleeves and aim at Naruto with fangs showing. He quickly jumps up and shots a blast of lighting from his hands and it zaps the snakes away but he was too slow to react to Anko behind him who hits him to the ground. Man this is going to be a long day, he says with a grin on his bloody face. It's midday and we can see Naruto laying on the ground without a shirt thanks to his sadistic teacher who burn his trench coat and white tank top off with a fireball jutsu. Trees on the ground thanks to the giant snakes that chased him around with Anko laughing on top of it throwing snakes and kanai at him and even threw her wet panites at him that landed on his face, she apparently got off to making him suffer. Anko even kicked him through a couple of trees that broke a couple of bones. Aa Anko sensei I can't move. I think I broke my legs when I fell out of that tree because those snakes tried to bite me. Naruto says in a hurting tone. Ah don't worry Naruto-kun I'll carry you to my favorite place so we can eat, she says throwing him over her shoulder much to his irritation. So are we going to get the food of the gods, he says happily. Yup Anko says, in a cheery tone, ramen, dango. Naruto-kun you did not just say that did you? She says in a sweet tone with a ghostly giant snake appearing behind her with its fangs out. Causing Naruto to make his own inner beast to appear in the form of a giant red fox to appear with its teeth showing. This is the scene one Kuranai Yuhi shows up to see causing her to sweat nervously. Kuranai is a close friend of Anko and also has the nickname of Konoha's Ice Queen. She is a fair-skinned woman of a slender build. She has long black hair untamed hair reaching her upper back with unique ruby red eyes with rings in them that look like Tomo. She wears makeup consisting of red lipstick and purple eyeshadow. She wears what looks like bandages over a mesh shirt to cover up her D-cup breast and one red sleeve made for distracting enemies. Anko Chan. This shout knocks the two out of their trans. Oh hello Nai Chan. 
Anko says with a happy smile. What are you doing with a shirtless kid in the forest of death? She says looking at Naruto who gives her a foxy smile. Oh don't mind us Nai Chan me and Anko were just getting hot and sweaty. He says to Kuranai who raises her eyebrow at his way of talking to her. Until what he says clicks in and she gives him a glare and releases key on him. What do you mean getting hot and sweaty you pervert? But to her surprise the key does nothing to him and he looks over to a blushing Anko. Anko Chan tell her. He says still grinning. D don't say it like that you baka. Anko says with a light dust of pink on her cheeks and smacks him upside the head because he's still over her shoulder. Anyways we were about to go eat Dango, the food of the gods. Sends a glare at Naruto telling him to be quiet. Do you want to come with us Nai-chan? This causes Naruto to make a lighting whip he learned how to make while running for his life from the giant snakes and smacks Anko's butt with it which makes her eep and blush then send a glare at him. Ah yes but Anko why does this kid who is only 13 have a lighting affinity so strong? I don't know. Hey let's test it with chakra paper do you have any? Anko asked Giddy. Yes I do. I picked some up for my future genin team but I guess I can spare one. She says sweat dropping at her friend's antics. With that said she pulls one out and hands it over to Anko who snatches it away making a tick mark appear on the woman's head. Okay Naruto-kun just channel your chakra into this and we will see what happens after that. She says, putting him down off her shoulder. Naruto-kun. These two seem pretty close after they just met. Well not surprised they are so similar, it's like they were made for each other. Okay Anko-sensei. With that said he did just that and it shocks everyone at what they see. The paper split into 100 pieces which then crumbled up into small balls and then they all turned to water which formed a large puddle at their feet. Uh, is that supposed to happen? Naruto asked uncertain. We have to go show the Hokage that a reaction like this can only mean a bloodline, said Kuranai with wide eyes. With that said they all body flicker to the Hokage office. Old man guess who's back? Naruto said appearing with two companions in a body flicker. Show some respect you perverted brat. Kuranai hits him over the head which makes a huge bump appear over his head. Ow what's your problem Nai-chan why are you so uptight you need to get laid. He yells at her. A tick mark appears on her head with a face red from anger or embarrassment. You little brat. She says and proceeds to beat the already injured Naruto black and blue. Huff what does he know about getting laid, little pervert. Everyone sweat drops at the scene. Kof Hokage sama, we have important news to share with you, the snickering Anko says. What would that be, Anko? the laughing Hokage says. We believe Naruto kun has a bloodline, Anko says, getting a little bit more serious. Oh, you mean his storm release? Yes, we saw this yesterday, but we did not have any chakra paper, so I just guessed what it was, and I must be correct. Yes, Hokage sama, we tested his affinity, and the paper was cut in 100 pieces formed into small balls and then formed a large puddle. Kuranai said with surprise, still in her tone. Wow his water affinity is stronger than that of Tobarama sensei hee hee Naruto-kun you are truly amazing. Maybe I should give him his parents scrolls and he can learn his mother's water jutsu and kenjutsu style along with his father's wind jutsu. Naruto-kun you have the bloodline storm release. It is a very powerful bloodline that with enough control you can cause mass storms. It is a combination of water and lighting natured chakra to make storm release. I got you old man I've already got a good handle on it see. He says and makes a lightning whip and throws it at the bookcase and grabs a root anbu. Faster than Naruto can see the old Hokage flashes to the anbu and jams a kanai in the anbu face mask. Causing the body to slump over in Naruto's lighting whip and the body caught fire. That Danzo I swear I'm going to kill him. Like Naruto-kun said I need to get my act together, and Naruto must be a censor. Naruto-kun, can you use water chakra to put this fire out? The Hokage asks in a firm tone not matching his age. I don't know how to use water yet, the blonde says sadly. Just picture your chakra flowing like water and pushing through everything like a rampaging storm. The Hokage says while making a sign for his anbu to go. Okay old man. Naruto then closes his eyes to focus then to everyone's shock water starts to form around him and quickly drops on the burning anbu and soaks the body and everyone else. Ha I did it thanks old man. Naruto pumps his fist up unaware of the angry ruby eyed woman approaching him from behind. Naruto kun, would you please come here and let me talk to you? She says in a voice too sweet for his liking. Everyone see the death god appear behind her laughing. See you old man, 
I have to run for my life. Naruto says jumping out the window. But not before making a lighting whip and smacking the snake mistress on her ass sending an electric shock up her body causing her to run behind Kurenai with an angry face. Uzumaki. You get your ass back here. The two women scream with all their womanly fury. We can find Naruto doing something that has become one of his new favorite things to pass the time when there is nothing to do or his Nai-chan isn't there for him to tease her. Instead he is running his fingers through the tails of one nine-tailed vixen named Kasumi who is purring happily while laying across his bed in her Hanyu form since Naruto told her it would be okay to show what she really looks like in the comfort of his rundown apartment. He can't help but laugh at how they meet. Flashback. Anko-chan I think I've de-drunk enough. Haven't we celebrated enough over my new discovery? He speaks with red cheeks due to the alcohol or the way Anko has her breast on his head. Gee Gaki you lightweight. Ha can't hold your lick. She was cut off when she passed out due to how much drinking she had did that night and Naruto had to carry the drunk Anko home getting weird looks from the villagers. When they got to her house he put her in the bed but as he tried to get away she pulled him down into his favorite place to rest. Ah I was gonna go home and work off this drunken state but this is fine. Mindscape. Oh why am I in a sewer and why am I still drunk? I can't even stand straight. Damn Anko Chan we need to bring Kuranai Chan with us next time she is the responsible one. Well let's go explore. He then runs off without a care in the world. After a few minutes of just stumbling around he finds himself in front of a cage and because of the state he is in logic goes out the window and he just runs up to it but trips and falls on his face dogging a giant claw but he doesn't seem to notice. Stupid ninja can't even run straight I'm amazed you got so strong with that stupid bloodline of yours. A voice in the darkness says. Hey. Who you calling a stupid ninja you must not know who I am. I am the pie eating trailblazing eyebrow raising jabroni beating heart stopping elbow dropping Naruto Uzumaki. A moment of silence followed, no one even moved but Naruto still had that grin on his face. Ha 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 that was actually pretty good, you are a very entertaining ninja. Haha <laughs> yay I just came up with that now I wonder if Anko Chan will like it. He says with a hand behind his head and a grin that could split his face. But now that I'm not so drunk I can only assume you are the Kyubi and this is inside the seal and this is a representation of my mind. Naruto says with a serious gaze looking into the darkness. A giant red eye with a black slit appears followed by giant teeth and a grinning face makes Naruto match its grin. My my maybe I was wrong and you are not a stupid ninja. Are you a boy or girl? The question came from the blonde who had a questioning gaze aimed at the fox. Really, that is the first thing you decide to ask me. It just makes talking to you a lot easier and not calling you an it. The Kyubi eyes him for a second deciding if it should reveal such information to the Baka ninja. I am a woman that you have never seen before. Said the now female fox with pride in her tone. Oh my ramen gods up above the strongest biju is a woman and a prideful one at that. Oh man, wait until Kuranai Chan hears that she is gonna be happy for the rest of her life. What, you have a problem with that ninja? The vixen says releasing some key on him that makes him nervous. And no I think that is really good for all the females in the world who are put down because of east men and you have really nice fur it makes me want to just lay in it all day. Are really why you think so? The Kyubi says in a more softer female voice. Yes I do, you could be a pillar of strength for all the women of the world. All you would need is a more human appearance and be a little nicer and you might just become a role model similar to Tsunade Senju. Well I do have a Hanyo form if you would like to see it but you would have to do something for me. What would that be? Naruto says with a raised eyebrow. You need to change this place up a bit and give me messages anytime I ask for them. She says in a tone of arrogance as if talking to someone lower than her. Um, that seems reasonable. I could imagine being in a sewer 24-7 would. He then closes his eyes so that he can focus on changing his mindscape and little by little the place gains light the water is replaced with grass, the walls become huge trees and the sound of following water could be heard as a river along with a small waterfall can be seen coming out of the ground. Ha now tell me this isn't awesome, the blonde says, pumping a fist in the air. The Kyubi is speechless as to what has just happened, she was not expecting the little human to do such a good job on his first try. But then she stops and looks for the seal and sees it on a rock under a tree. Thank you Naruto and now is promised prepare to be amazed by my beauty. In a flash of light the giant fox can be seen getting smaller until a human form is seen then and there Naruto sees a sight he will never forget. 
Standing there is a woman with orange hair with red fox ears on top of her head, hair that goes down to the middle of her back followed by the nine orange fox tails. She still has those blood red eyes with fox slits and now a red lipstick and a narrow jawline. DD cup breast and an hourglass figure that makes men's heads turn and plump thighs that make the world go round. Next thing that happens is Naruto is blown back to the seal and hits it and cracks it. Upon seeing this Kayubi fears the worst because her chakra starts leaking to Naruto a bit but suddenly stops when Naruto sees this and fixes the rock by imaging it the way it used to be. Now that could have been bad ha ha ha. The laughing blonde catches something flying towards his head and it's soft, he then starts to rub his face in it only to stop when he hears a moan come from the Kayubi. Kayubi san I am, he is cut off when she raises a hand to stop him. Kasumi is my name J just don't stop rubbing my tails. Okay J just put some clothes on your naked, the blushing blonde says. She then puts on a red kimono with little red foxes on it. The kimono is open showing some cleavage. It only reaches to her thighs and stops showing her long legs. She wears red ankle socks to finish the outfit. Happy now. She says with a red face cause Naruto has started brushing her tails. This is gonna be a great friendship, Kasumi-chan. The grinning blonde says that makes the redhead blush a little. Baka, end flashback. Wake up Kasumi-chan I have team placements today and I don't want to be late. The blonde says whispering in her fox ears giving them a little pat. Naruto-kun. Why do you have to strike them with your new storm release jutsu that leveled the forest clearing? She says pouting. Kasumi-chan I did that jutsu and the whole village was in a thunderstorm for the rest of the day and then I had to tell the old man what I did. He says with a sweet drop. Look, just become a little fox and I can take you with me when I fly there. He says with a smirk knowing how much her and Anko like that. She transforms into the size of an Inazuka pup and instantly grins up at Naruto who is also grinning. You know I still find it hard to believe I can fly using wind release man. I love those shadow clones, we really flew all over the village that day ha ha ha. Yay yay just get dressed and let's go flying. Yip the happy fox. Okay Jez you can be really impatient sometimes. A smack upside his head by a tail and he's up and moving. Naruto can be seen wearing black anbu style sandals so he can stay light on his feet. A black t-shirt with the kanji storm over his seal and a tan trench coat like Anko she got him as a gift for buying her dango. His headband tied on his forehead along with a sheath katana on his waist hidden by the coat. He picked up because his clone found a style called moonlight sword style. The style uses brute force or flexibility when needed but it is not really used because masters of the sword have a bloody life ahead of them, but a little blood never stopped Naruto from getting what he wanted. The sword is about two feet long. The handle is black and the guard is in the shape of a yin-yang symbol while the blade is silver made for cutting through the flesh of enemies. Okay. I'm ready to go Kasumi-chan hop on. She then climbs onto the top of his head and walks to his window and jumps out and takes flight to the academy. Along the way the people of the red light district wave to him and give him nice smiles and the women call out to him. Naruto-sama. When will you come give us a visit? A horde of women from the brothels come to ask him the same thing. He gives them a wise smirk that shows his longer fangs that makes them all swoon. I'm telling you Kasumi-chan it's like they don't know I'm only 13. Well you look like a 15 year old with all the physical training you've been doing for years and not to mention you're always giving the people of this area high quality goods you steal from the nobles and stop doing that you are gonna get in real trouble. She says while smacking his head with her paws. Ah, oh, I didn't know you cared so much about me Kasumi-chan. Am I not just a baka ninja anymore? He says with a knowing look. Luckily her fur can hide her blush because her face was burning red. B Baka Ninjin don't ever think about something like that again. Once he exited the red light district it's back to the glares of hatred while the kids look in awe at the flying boy and fox. It's crazy how the people who are considered the outcast of the village treat me better than this. Well that's because they can kinda understand what you are going through and you've also helped these people a lot and they respect you for that. She says a little sadly feeling guilty. Naruto then turns and is now flying with his back to the ground and Kasumi on his stomach. Hey, I told you not to think that. None of this is your fault so stop blaming yourself, he says in a soft tone while rubbing her head. Kasumi then gives him a smile or as much as a fox could give with those sharp teeth. Thank you Naruto-kun, she says feeling better. Now what do you say? We make an epic entrance Anko style, he says giving her a foxy grin. She yips happily. 
Next thing the villagers see Naruto become covered in blue lighting and disappear in a bolt. Academy in one classroom we can see a bunch of kids talking and laughing all excited or nervous for the test about to happen today. The civilian children sit at the bottom while the clan heir are at the top of the class. We can see a black haired boy with the hair of a duck but by the window with girls giving him eyes with hearts while he ignores them. This is Sasuke Uchiha, the last loyal Uchiha of the leaf. Above him we can see a boy with red fang markings on his face. This is Kiba Inazuka with his best friend Akamaru on his head. Next to him we can see a boy in a green overcoat with sunglasses and a small humming coming from him. His name is Shino Abarame. To the left of them we can see a boy with spiky black hair that looks like a ponytail and a lazy face. This is Shikamaru Nara. Next to him is a fat boy with swirls on his face. His name is Choji Akamichi. In the top row we can see a girl with midnight blue hair and lavender eyes. This is Hanada Hayuga. She is looking around like she is trying to find someone. It is a known fact in the class that she has a massive crush on one Naruto Uzumaki but he does not know. Naruto-kun I hope that you passed. A rumbling can be heard coming to that class and everyone covers their ears and sits down because they know what is gonna happen. H.A. Inopig I win first I get to sit next to my Sasuke-kun. Said a girl with bright pink hair and a big forehead this is Sakura Haruno. No you didn't can't you see I'm in front of you forehead girl. Says a girl with platinum blonde hair and pupils sky blue eyes. They rush up to the duck haired boy to sit next to him and then start to fight over who sits next to him. They are forced to stop when the outside gets dark and they can see the clouds darken and lightning start to strike down and thunder boom across the sky. Everyone all over the village looks up to see what is going on and the people of the red light district start to cheer loud and the Hokage can only rub his head and smoke his pipe at seeing what is going on. Back in the classroom everyone is looking outside when they see a lighting bolt come flying at their school. All the kids scream and hide under the desk until it makes contact. The windows break and something has landed in the class. The kids peek from under the desk to see what is going on and what they see all the girls blush and the boys look in awe. Hello my future comrades, I Naruto Uzumaki have come. Hanada with a red face looking in awe and a bloody nose along with most of the girls even Sakura and Ino can't help but blush. The boys are jealous and Sasuke is green with envy along with the furious Kiba. NN Naruto is that you, asked the hesitant Ino with a red face at how handsome Naruto looks. Naruto gives her a charming smile and walks real close to her making her even redder. Yes it is Ino Chan do you like what you see? He says kissing her hand this causes her to faint along with Hanada. One girl is not buying it though. Naruto Baka don't do that again. She runs to him with her fist cocked ready to punch him only to be shocked when he grabs her fist and backhands her and gives her a cold glare. Don't do that again. He says in a cold tone amplified by the growling fox on his shoulder. He then walks up to sit down next to the passed out Hanada and picks her up and sits her in his lap much to everyone's shock. But this makes one mutt angry. What do you think you are doing with my mate? Yelled the angry Kiba who is charging him only to stop when he is shot with a water bullet to the face by the blonde who gives him an icy gaze. Sit down. He adds some key to get his point across. Everyone is shocked at this display even the Junin watching. Hokage office everyone in the office was slack jawed at what just happened in such a short amount of time. H ho Hokage sama this is real and not a joke is it? said a bearded man named Asuma who looks like a young Hiruzen. A one eyed cyclops with silver hair has a wide eye and an orange book on the floor. Kakashi, did you see that? says Asuma with shock. H Hokage sama if I am correct. That is the storm release bloodline from Kumo H. How does he have that? Asked Kakashi because he saw it in the last war. Indeed he unlocked during the scroll incident and has been training with it in the forest of death for the past week but I didn't think he would progress so fast but, he does know the shadow clone jutsu secret so I'm guessing that how. Said the old Hokage much to that shock of everyone. Yup that's my Gaki right Nai Chan. Anko says pulling Kuranai in a hug. Anko, Kuranai. You know this kid? asked Asuma with shock. Yes, we do know him, but I wish I didn't because he's a little pervert. Kuranai says with a little bit of red on her face, remembering some of the things Naruto has done to her. How do you know him? asked Kakshi, wanting information. Well, he came to the Forest of Death and started fighting animals and training his new power. Long story short, I sent a giant snake after him and he killed it with one shot and half an area. 
everyone was shocked at the fact a genin beat Anko's snake. And how do you know him Kurinai? Asked Asuma because he saw her red face and has a crush on her and wants to know if this gaki is a threat to his women. Well I ran into him and Anko fighting in the forest and then I beat him black and blue for being a pervert. She says with a smirk on her face at the end of her statement. The whole room sweet drop at her answer. Ah she was just upset that he got her all wet. All the males get the wrong idea and have nosebleeds. S shut up Anko or no Dango for a month, she say red faced. Ah come on don't be like that I'll let you cuddle with him if you want. Anko says giving her puppy dog eyes. WW why would I want to do that with him? I swear you both are perverts, she says blushing at the idea. Can we just get back to the class? said Kakashi wanting to know more about his sensei's son. Classroom Iruka walks in to see a classroom completely silent and wide-eyed. He can see a shaking Kiba and Akamaru. Ino and the rest of the girls are blushing looking at Naruto brushing the hair of a sleeping Hanada in the lap of Naruto. The girls are sending the smiling Hanada heard glares and the boys are the same to Naruto. O.K class, let's get to what we all came for, which is your team. This snaps everyone out of their gaze. Teams 1. Naruto tunes him out and continues to stroke both Hanada and Kasumi making the fox wag its tail back and forth. Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno and a random civilian ninja who isn't worth anything. Your sensei is Kakashi Hitaki. Sakura sits next to Sasuke and the civilian ninja comes to sit next to them but Sakura punches him away. Team 8 will be Hanada Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, Shino Abarame and your sensei is Kurenai Yuhi. Naruto shakes Hanada up. And Naruto kun? Hanada asked, looking confused at where she is sitting. Hello, Hanada chan. Did you have a good sleep? He spoke huskily in her ear, making her shiver. She then notices where she is and jumps up with a red face and sits back in her seat, rubbing her fingers and legs together, then passes out with a nosebleed. Hokage office, that little pervert, when I get my hands on him, I'm gonna wring his neck. Yelled the enraged Jonin, being held back by Anko. Now are you just upset he didn't do it to you? Anko says, teasing her. Anko. Class, Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choju Akamichi and your sensei will be Asuma Sardobi. Said the ready to leave Aruka. Aruka sensei, what about my team? Asked the whiskered blonde. Ha dead last you don't get a team loser, shouted the Inazuka. Before anyone could react, Naruto dropped kicked him in the face. Now the next person who calls me that will get the same thing. Silence. Aruka sensei you can get back to it, he says going back to his seat. Aruka sweat dropped. Yay your team is but before he could continue he is interrupted when a brown blur hits him. It is revealed to be Anko Mitrashi. Plushy kun I am your sensei but you better run to our training ground you have an angry Nai Chan after you. At that moment the other sensei came into the room. And like she said Kurenai is sending massive ki and Naruto who is just sending there with a charming smile that melts her anger away. Hello Kurenai chan you are looking as beautiful as ever I see. He says walking up to her, grabbing her hand and kissing it. This makes her blush and turn her head to keep him from looking. He then grabs her by the waist and pulls her to him and he is looking in her eyes deeply because he is standing at 5 feet 6 to her 5 feet 5 of height. This makes her blush even more. Don't be mad at me. I promise I can make it up to you. He says in her ear, giving her earlobe a bite making her knees a little weak. Anko pushes them apart blushing at the show while Kurenai's whole face is red and the males are wide. Let's go to Naruto-kun, we have things to do. She then disappears but not before Naruto smacks Kurenai on the ass making her jump and blush more. Forest of death. Okay Naruto-kun what you have to do is find me somewhere in this forest and then you pass and I give you a good reward. She says giving him a wise smirk and Naruto returns it. Well Anko sensei, you can consider this test pass. I'm gonna find you, he says with a confident smirk. Well if you are so sure, come and get me. She disappears in a puff of smoke. Kasumi chan you got her smell right. He looks to the fox raped around his neck like a scarf. She wags her tail in front of his face. I will get it but what do I get if I do this, she said, smirking. Oh well I guess I could rub that spot that you can't get yourself and apply that oil on your, she cuts him off with a smack from her tail. DD don't speak anymore Baka Ninjin. She says blushing under her fur. He can only chuckle and shoot in a bolt of lighting after his Y sensei. 
Somewhere in the forest Anko can be seen riding on a giant snake running from her handsome student. That Gaki's fast and probably has that fox on my scent trail. As if on perfect time lighting strikes, wind blades, and water blades are coming out of the sky and are closing in on her and the snake. She replaces herself with a log just in time to avoid being struck by all that. My god he can use all three of his elements. Why did I agree to this? Anko thinks to herself crying anime tears. Well as long as he doesn't use his storm release I should be able to win. As if being cursed by the gods she sees Naruto and three clones going through hand signs. Storm release circuit. Naruto shouts and multiple light blue rays of lightning rush in Anko who can 18 light beams coming at her. She ducks, spins, jumps and doges but still gets hit in the shoulder, left leg and right arm. Damn, it disrupted my nervous system and now I can't even feel where he hit me. She then turns and launches a valley of shuriken and appears behind Naruto with a heel drop but Naruto makes arms out of lighting to grab Anko and he blocks Anko shuriken with his own kanai. Got you Anko sensei. Naruto says only to be surprised when the Anko turns into mud. Not surprised she isn't a special junin for nothing. Naruto thinks to himself. A little ways away Anko is limping in the cover of trees and bushes while trying to wrap her leg in bandages so she can recover. Got to be quick before he. Her thoughts were cut off when she hears the sound of rushing water. Found you. The statement came from Naruto on top of a raging wave. Water style water shockwave. Naruto shouts with a wide grin on his face. Someone help me. Those were the last thoughts she had before the waves hit her and was tossed around until she passed out. You think we went overboard Kasumi-chan? Naruto asked as he walks to the Anko who is soaked in water. Nah she did have those snakes almost eat you. Responded Kasumi. Yay, you're right let's bring her to the hospital so we can get that reward, he says smirking. You pervert. Kasumi says, Anko Chan I said I was sorry can you please send you snakes away, you are not even supposed to be moving. Naruto replied wrapped up in snakes to the neck. No, you got me all wet and not the good kind you even messed up my favorite trench coat with your stew up storm release circuit. The bandaged cover Anko says waving her hand childishly. Anko Chan if you release your snakes I'll take you out on a date to anywhere you like. In an instant all the snakes puff away in smoke and Anko can be seen smiling brightly. You promise Naruto kun. It's a promise of a lifetime, he says giving her a thumbs up. Well tomorrow when I get out of the hospital at 8 pm I would like to go somewhere in the red light district where they all worship you even the Yakuza. She says with a bright smile still on her face. Well do you have a specific place in mind that you would like to go? He asked her with a raised eyebrow. Well can you get us into the Raging Fox? It's a new restaurant that just opened up. Speaking of fox, where is that fox you had during the test? She says looking around for it. Oh her name is Kasumi and she is back at my apartment probably sleeping. He says with a laugh. Naruto apartment we can see Kasumi in nothing but one of Naruto's big shirts and red socks sliding across the place singing with a makeshift microphone in her hand. He lick me like a lollipop. He lick me like a lollipop. He lick me like a lollipop. Shadi want a thug. I don't own the song Lil Wayne does back to hospital. Yay she can be really lazy sometimes, he said with a laugh. But don't worry about that Anko Chan I'll go set everything up and get some more training and oh you also have to go to the Hokage meeting later so remember that. He then gets up and kisses her on the forehead getting a little blush from her then he goes to the window and flies off. Anko can only sigh at her situation. Man, I really think I am starting to fall in love with plushy Kun. That makes her blush but then she remembers the Hokage meeting. I'm going to lose so much face at that place when I tell them how he beat me. She says crying anime tears. Streets of Konoha Naruto has just landed from his flight and starts walking to the red light district getting the usual looks of hatred from the older adults while some ninjas give him nods of respect while the kids still stare at him in awe because he can fly while the girls eye him like a piece of meat. A ball bounces in front of his path and five kids come to get it. Hello kids did you lose this? He says kindly. The kids recognize him and all get stars in their eyes. A brown haired girl walks up to him and asks. Hey you're the guy who can fly, can you take us flying please? She says giving him the puppy dog eyes and quivering lips. Oh man even the kids know this jutsu must look away but I can't. He then drops his head in defeat. Fine but you need to ask your parents first. He tells them. They run off to their parents and ask. Ka-chan can we go flying with that guy pweac? 
The parents look at Naruto with hatred but decide to let it happen for their kid's sake. Fine, but nothing better happened to our kids or you are gonna get it. Naruto only rolls his eyes at their weak key. Nothing will happen to your kids. I am a professional. He says with a grin. The kids run to him with bright smiles. Shadow Clone Jutsu. The blonde proclaimed. Four shadow clones appear and pick the kids up on his back and then he blasts off in the air and the only thing that can be heard are the laughing kids. This leaves everyone looking at the blonde in a new way they think they might have been wrong to him. It's sunset and Naruto can be seen in the red light district going to the raging fox getting reservations for him and Anko. And Naruto-sama what can we do for you here? One of the waiters asked bowing along with everyone else. I would like a reservation tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for me and Anko Midarashi. Will that be okay? He asked, smiling at the respect he gets from the people. Oh of course Naruto-sama will be all you need today. Yes it is. He says and then walks away. All right time to get some training done. He then sees two people in green spandex with bowls haircuts and bushy eyebrows. Well these guys look like they need another partner. Without further to do he ran up next to them. Hello our youthful friend how can we help you today? The older one asks. Do you wish to bask in the springtime of youth with us? The younger one asks while they are all still running. What is youth and springtime? Naruto asked, confused only to be surprised when they both stopped and looked at him in horror. Lee this an emergency we must help our fellow comrade understand the joys of youth. Yes guy sensei. The now named Lee says with fire in his eyes. The springtime of youth is when you train to better yourself in any way possible. You put in the effort to accomplish any goal by blood sweat and tears. It's about drive it's about power put in the work and put in the hours. Might guy says with Lee writing it all down in a notepad. Naruto then looks in understandment. Well can I join you on your youthful training? I want to really feel the burn today. The two look in shock before it turns to excitement, and they cry youthful tears. Of course you can, they both shout. What is your name my youthful friend? Guy asked with a thumbs up and sparkling teeth. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Well Naruto-kun let's get to it by running 100 laps around the village and then 500 push-ups and then 500 sit-ups then climb the Hokage monument with boulders on her back then we have a all-out spar. Naruto loses a little color at all the workouts only to be replaced with a grin because he is getting what he wanted. Hokage Tower all the Jonin sensei are in the Hokage office waiting for one extra Jonin so they can finally start the meeting. While waiting they often saw the trio of Guy, Lee, and Naruto running laps around the village and to everyone's shock he was keeping up with them and that is an achievement in itself because everyone knows how much stamina those two have. They even saw him flying with kids. Hokage-sama what is that boy made off not only is he working out with those two but he is flying kids around on his back. I can't even do that with my wind manipulation yeet. Asuma said slack jawed along with the other Jonin except the slightly recovered Anko and healthy Kurenai. Sorry I was late, Hokage-sama. I saw kids flying in the sky and stayed inside because I thought the world was ending, said the one-eyed man. Only to be shocked when the old cage shot him with heavy key that sent him on one knee and made everyone else nervous. Listen here Kakashi I let your lateness slide for too long now you are a grown man you need to grow up and get your shit together. When I call you I want to hear not whenever you feel like it. Do you understand me? Why why yes Hokage-sama. The kneeling Jonin says. Then the key vanished, okay everyone we are here to see who passed and who didn't. The leader of teams 1 to 6 failed. Kakashi leader of team 7. Pass. Everyone is shocked. Explain. Said the old cage in an authoritative voice. Well Sasuke Uchiha is worthy of his title rookie of the year. This gains a snort from Anko and Kurenai. Anyways he shot a fireball at me as a cover for Sakura Haruno and the civilian ninja to flank me with weapons and try to snock the bells but it didn't work and I tied them up but because they worked together I passed them. Okay, that is good next team 8, said the Hokage looking at Kurenai. I gave my team a tracking test by telling them to find me. They worked together with Shino's bugs and Kiba's senses along with Hanada's bloodline to find me. Okay we have a future tracker team. Next team 10. The Hokage looked at his son for his report. For my team I just told them they had to keep me still and they used perfect team work to keep me still for the 5 seconds. As to be expected those kids are basically siblings. Now Anko can you please tell me how you ended up in a hospital and are so injured? Said the Hokage already having an idea. 
Well you see I kind of. She mumbled the last part with a blush and looked down. Anko, can you speak up? We didn't catch that last part. Said the smiling Kuranai at being able to tease her friend for once. I said I got beat up there, are happy now. The blushing Anko said she couldn't believe what was happening to her thanks to that Gaki. Anko are you telling me your students sent you to the hospital? Said Kakashi with one wide eye. You guys didn't see him he found me and started to shoot wind blades along with water blades at me. Then when I though I could get away he used a jutsu called storm release circuit on me and 18 beams came from the three shadow clones and I was hit in the leg, arm, and shoulder. Said Anko trying to save face. But that's not all. When I tried to hit him from his blind spot he made arms of lighting come from his back and then tried to fry me on the spot. Wow. This kid is amazing. I see why you put him on a solo team nobody would be able to keep up with him. Said Asuma, a little jealous of the kid. Yay I just hope he doesn't end up like another Itachi or we will have to put him down. Said the serious Kakashi. That statement got different reactions from other people. The Jonin that still hates Naruto nodded in agreement while the ones who like him send glares at the other occupants. While the Hokage and Anko, Kurenai, send key to all of them, making them quiet. Kakashi watch what you say. I'll have you know as much of the things that have happened to him he is still willing to stay loyal to the village that does not deserve him, said the angry Hokage. S sorry. The Jonin puts his head down in shame. Now Anko is there anymore you would like to give on what happened? Asked the cage looking back at Anko. Yes he knocked me out using water style water shock wave and it was like a massive wave the size of fully grown trees and he hit me with it and I was tossed around in the water and passed out. Wow I should give him the water exercise of the second Hokage so he can push his water manipulation even further. Hiruzen thought to himself. Well everyone go home this meeting is over. Anko you go get some rest you look like you could use it. The Hokage dismissed everyone. Outside the Janin go their separate ways while some stick together like Anko, Kurenai, Kakashi and Asuma. Who look like they want to ask some questions? How can I help you? Asuma asked Kurenai, looking at the nervous Asuma. Well I wanted to know if you want to go out on a date tomorrow. Kurenai was shocked at what he said because she too had feelings for him but the feelings were going away because she had noticed how sometimes he would look at her and it was not how Naruto would look at her with love and playfulness. That made her blush. Asuma sees this though she would say yes but is surprised when she shakes her head no. Sorry. Asuma I don't want to go on a date with you I don't see you that way. Said Kurenai giving him a weak smile. Anko pumps her fist slightly. Oh okay maybe some other time. He then body flickers away leaving only Kakashi reading his orange book and the two women who were irritated at this. And what do you want? Asked Anko, giving him a heated glare. Now there is no need to be like that. I just want to know if you can tell me more about your student, he says, giving her an eye smile. And why would I give up information on him like that? Anko said getting a little suspicious of the man along with Kurenai. Well information is key to a ninja and if you want to know more about him you are gonna have to ask him yourself because I will not be telling you, she says a little hostile. Fine. As all he said then he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Well now that he is gone Nai Chan I am going on a date with Naruto kun. She says, jumping in the surprised Kurenai's arms. W what a date when? Asked Kurenai with wide eyes. Tomorrow, it's gonna be perfect because it's gonna be in the red light district and that place loves him. Oh I see I hope you have fun she says trying to walk away to not show Anko how sad she is. Look Kurenai just stop fighting it and admit that you like him and then you can also go on a date with him I don't mind sharing with you. Anko says, pulling her back causing Kurenai to blush at what she said. Ah really you would do that for me, said the red-faced Kurenai. Of course I would write Naruto-kun. Anko said causing Kurenai to turn around to look for her Naruto-kun only to hear the laughing Anko on the ground holding her stomach laughing at her. Oh, so you think this is funny well I got something for you. Kurenai says going through hand signs that make Anko take off running with Kurenai chasing her. Next morning we can see Naruto running morning laps around the village in black ninja sandals and black anbu pants with no shirt causing all the girls he passes to stare at his body that is dripping with sweat. Next to him is his teacher Anko running with him in similar appearance except she has on a black sport bar causing her chest to bounce every time she runs. Okay Anko sensei we have 50 more laps and that 100 think you can keep up I am going to be moving at John in speeds now. He says challenging, causing her to smirk at him. 
Naruto-kun I was doing this before you were even walking the question is can you keep up with me? She says and takes off at Jonin speeds only becoming a purple blur to those who can't keep up with her only to be passed by a golden blur that sounded like it was laughing. Get back here Gaki. Is what she said before speeding up. They are neck and neck but are joined by others like Might Guy with his famous smile and his copy Rock Lee with the same smile. Hello my youthful comrades let us bath in the springtime of youth, he says loudly. The green duo then pulls ahead of Naruto and Anko who smirk at the challenge before passing the two. Loser has to do 50 more laps, Naruto says before blasting off laughing. The green duo gets fire in their eyes and dash off after them, Naruto-kun my eternal rival I shall not lose, said Lee with fire. Way to go Lee let's go. The ninja can barely see the people running through the village, only the Jonin can see them. It's the last lap Anko sensei hold on and we got this victory said the sweet covered naruto looking back at the panting anko don't worry about me just keep going she says barely being able to keep up with her student no we finish this together he says picking her up and putting her over his shoulder getting a smack to the head at least warn me next time you ass she says to him this caused the blonde to chuckle and you have a nice ass he says giving it a smack causing her to blush just run you perv in the back might guy picks up rock lee because he cannot keep up anymore lee naruto kun is right we finish together he says speeding up and is right next to naruto now the two racers are neck and neck and can see the finish line with a small crowd cheering them on the two are about to cross the line and time slows down watching the two pass and they are neck and neck they two pass the line and collapse breathing hard out of breath the two sit up to look at the other ninja to ask who won it was a tie said one genma with a senbon in his mouth good race guy sensei we really bathed in the springtime of youth this morning said the smiling blonde yes naruto kun we will have a rematch naruto then gets up with anko still on his shoulder and starts to walk off to the house of anko who had passed out due to how tired she was okay goodbye guys i'll see you around he says waving his hand later that day Okay Anko no need to be nervous it's just you and Naruto-kun going out on a date you two hang out all the time, said Yuago Azuki one Anko's closest friends. Yay. I can always see you two having a good time around the village, said Hana Inazuka, another one of Anko's closest friends. You look fine Anko, that dress suits you perfectly, said Kurenai. Anko can be seen in a purple dress that goes down to her ankles with a high split on her left leg giving her legs room to move and show. It is held up by two straps that lay on her shoulders, she has her hair down to her shoulders and hangs over her breast that are visible due to the slit in the chest area. Are you sure maybe I should? She is cut off when a knock sounds at her door. All the girls quiet down and they push Anko to the door to open it. When she opens the door they all see Naruto in a white button-up with an orange tie and black slacks along with black dress shoes that Kasumi picked out for him. Wow Anko-chan you look beautiful I think I can die in peace now he said, giving her a warm smile. This makes all the girls blush hard. T thank you and Naruto-kun you look really handsome as well. He grabs her hand and kisses it making her blush more. Shall we go Haim? I want her back by 10 mister and keep your hands to yourself. Kuranai says yelling at him only to be ignored when Naruto puts his hands on Anko butt causing the girls to giggle at the red face Kuranai. I swear I'm gonna kill him one day. Well do it after I can get a shot at him said Hannah with a small blush on her face. The two girls whip their heads to her in surprise. Hannah Chan would you really date him? asked Yugo. Yes, I can just sense it coming off him he is alpha male and there is no doubt about it and not like my stupid brother who thinks he is just an alpha and everyone should submit to him, she says a little heated. On the streets the two turn heads when they walk and they can't help but smile at the shocked faces everyone has at seeing them. When they make it to the restaurant the two are escorted to the roof where it is just the two of them alone and they conversate and get to know a little bit more about each other while laughing and smiling the whole time while blushing at the teasing the two did towards each other. Well, Anko-chan this has been a great night and I hope we can do this some other time. He says holding her hand walking up to her house in the forest of death. Yes Naruto-kun I've had a really good time tonight but you should take Kurenai-chan she also would like one but won't say it. Anko says with her head on Naruto's shoulder just enjoying being right next to him. We are here and just in time before anything bad could have happened to me. They both chuckle at that. 
The two just look at each other lovingly before gradually getting closer to each other until their lips meet for a kiss and Naruto pulls Anko closer to him while grabbing her by the waist making her gasp and takes advantage by shoving his tongue in her mouth showing who is in control while moving his hands to the slit in her dress giving her nice thighs slow rubs. The two are interrupted when they hear a thud and can see three girls on the floor with major nosebleeds. Well good night Anko Chan. He says giving her one more kiss goodbye before he turns around and disappears in a waterbody flicker. Anko sighs happily and turns around and skips to her bedroom with a goofy smile on her face. When Naruto gets home he can see a tuft of orange hair in his bed sleeping peacefully he strips to just a tank top and boxers and gets in bed next to her and she rolls over on top of him whispering Naruto-kun in her sleep. He kisses her forehead making her smile in her sleep. Good night, Kasumi-chan. He then falls asleep with a smile on his face. Two months later it's been two months since Naruto had been put on a team with Anko. Speaking of Anko, she had never been so happy in her life. Even the villagers that would always insult her could not bring her down, her relationship with Naruto had been going perfect. They would train. Together and because of that she had also gotten a little stronger she could not beat Asuma who used to be a guard for the fire daimyo. Naruto just seemed to get even stronger when he went to go ask for water scrolls from the Hokage and the deals he got out of that was just amazing. Flashback. Hey old man, I need you to help me with something. Naruto says to the Hokage behind the desk filling out paperwork. What would you need my help with Naruto-kun? Asked the old man with a raised eyebrow at the trench coat wearing blonde. I wanted to know if you have any water exercise, I could do so I can become better at water jutsu. Well, I do but why would I give it to you who is only a genin? The Hokage said with an amused smirk. Oh, so that's how we are gonna play it. Naruto then walks around the office eyeing the old man until he goes over to the picture of Tobarama and eyed it for a second. You know, old man I really admire the second he is my favorite Hokage. He has done so much he set the village on a good track after the death of the first. If I were a Hokage I would like to be just like him but more badass, he says grinning. Hey, I know he has some water scrolls let me have those, I would also like to get armor like his. I think it is really badass and it would totally look dope on me. Well, I do but what can I get out of this deal if I hand it over? Well, I can give you the secret to beating paperwork. As soon as he said that the old Hokage was on his knees begging him to tell him. Naruto-kun please tell me and I will give you anything. The man shakes Naruto violently. Okay okay I would like all his scrolls and armor to be made just like his but take the fur off the collar. Deal. The Hokage said quickly now tell me how to beat it. Okay shadow clones. The blonde said to the wide-eyed Hokage. Without further notice Hiruzen walks to the picture of the second and moves the picture and slides some blood onto the safe behind it. He then pulls out everything and seals it into a bigger scroll and hands it to Naruto who is smiling. I'll have your armor ready as soon as possible. Now leave me I have paper to finally defeat. Flashback over Anko Sensei what do you think the old man needs us for if he sent Kitty Chan after us? He asked his sensei who giggled at what he called the cat Anbu. I don't know but I was gonna give us a C rank mission today anyways so let's see what he wants. That's great, let's go. He says picking her up and flying to the Hokage office. Hokage office they appear in a pillar of water in front of the Hokage who has a serious face. Team 11 ready for action. Anko says. I have a mission for you guys it is an A ranked mission to help back up team 7 who have requested backup in wave. They ran into Zabuza and the Demon Brothers but those two have been dealt with by the Genin team. But they say Zabuza has another ninja with him and I want you guys to go and help him. He says in a serious tone. Yes lord old man. Yes Hokage-sama. The old man can't help but shake his head at Naruto. Naruto-kun your special order has been finished and it is ready for battle. He said smiling at the blonde throwing a scroll with it inside. Alright. I can test it out on this mission as well. He unseals the armor and can't help but grin at it. It blew battle armor similar to that of the second Hokage. Thank you old man we will leave right away but first Kitty Chan can I get a good luck hug? He says looking up at the ceiling only for a purple haired Anbu to drop from it and walk up to him. I told you to stop calling me that I am a grown woman not some kitten. She says walking into his open arms. Two had got close over the two months and would often have sword duels and she was surprised at how good he was and she recognized his style and instantly wanted to test it but she could never beat him. Ah don't be like that kitten you know you're going to miss me. 
He moved his hands to her ass and grabbed a handful. Eep! was the sound she made and if it were not for the mask everyone would see how red-faced she was. She then pulled out her sword and tried to cut him but he grabbed Anko and disappeared while everyone laughed at her. Gates of Konoha, all right Naruto-kun you have everything, she said checking her pack. Yup, me and Kasumi-chan are ready to take on this mission, Naruto said in his blue armor with Kasumi around his shoulder making a fur collar. All right let's go, she shouted and jumped off in the forest, a paw smacked the top of his head. Let's go already she is going to leave us behind. Okay geez you're so bossy. He then follows after her jumping next to her through the trees at John in speeds. Naruto and Anko could be seen jumping through the trees on their way to back up Team 7 who have requested immediate backup. They had been making good pace to the location which was the bridge builder's house named Tazuna. If we keep this pace we can be at the house by the end of the day, Naruto-kun. Anko says to her student who was slightly behind her along with the fox on his neck. Okay Anko-sensei I just hope we don't run into any trouble, he says looking around. As if Kami heard his wish a single ninja jumps in the duo's way. Way to go Naruto-kun, you just had to open your mouth, Anko says, sending Naruto a slight glare who rubs the back of his head. Well look what we have here. Two tree huggers a little too far away from home, said the missing ninja with a crossed out headband with the leaf symbol. Aoi Rokusho, who has the legendary Rage and No Ken made by the second Hokage and a treasure of the leaf. Anko, is that you? They let the snake whore out of her cage, haha. He laughs at the Anko, who is angry at his taunting but not as angry as one Naruto Uzumaki. Shut up, you traitor. What are you even doing here? Don't tell me you are working with Zabuza, she says while taking out a kanai. Yes, he told me to cover his tracks just in case they called back up and boy was he right I just didn't think they would send a snack after us. Why don't you join me and you can be just like your master and maybe even please me your master. He gives her a gaze filled with just lust in his eyes that makes her uneasy. His laughter is put to a halt when he is blasted with so much key he can barely breathe or stand. I think I've heard enough come out of that mouth of yours I think I will shut it forever. He says pulling his moonlight sword out of his sheath. It has been decided. You are gonna be the first to die by my blade. As he says that Aoi pulls the Raijin out to hopeful defend himself but he is still shaking. You can't beat me, I am invincible with the Raijin on my side, he shouts charging at the blonde. Die. Naruto says in a cold tone and swings his sword down and Aoi is split in half and a quarter mile of forest is also destroyed in his attack leaving Anko wide eyed. Naruto walks to Anko and pulls her to him and gives her a kiss full of love and passion that makes her lower area heat up. Nobody will touch you, you're mine. He says in her ear making her shiver at how possessive he is over her. Oh okay and Naruto-kun. She says still shaken up at what just happened. Naruto goes and picks up the rage and no ken that is laying next to a wide-eyed Aoi who died with terror in his eyes. Naruto then throws up on his body at killing his enemy so brutally. Why am I acting like this? He is not my first kill, he says with a shaken up voice. It's because when you killed Mizuki you really didn't have time to focus on what you did because there was so much going on you didn't even leave the ashes of that other guy, she says with a little laugh at the end. So cheer up, this is something you're gonna have to get used to, she says, giving a kiss to his cheek. Yes Naruto-kun don't worry we will be here to help you, the orange fox says on his shoulder nuzzling his face, giving it a little lick. Yay what that fox just said only to freeze when she realized that fox just talked. Naruto-kun. I know this fox just talked you want to tell me about that. She says giving him a smile to sweet smile to be good. Oh Anko-chan did I not tell you this is Kasumi-chan the Kayubi. He says with a nervous laugh only to block when she gets in his face, smile still there. You mean to tell me that you have been doing training and walking around with the fox that attacked the village 13 years ago just sitting on your shoulder? Yes. Bonk, you idiot why the hell didn't you tell me and how do you know she can be trusted? She says yelling in his face. Hey Anko-chan can you let me explain? The attack was not her fault she was under a genjutsu so none of that was her fault she is a really nice person although she can be a little bossy at times. Yes he is right, I was not myself for a lack of better terms that night I am sorry. The vixen says a little sadly. Wait, the Kayubi is a woman. Ha take that you east pigs. She says pumping a fist in the air with a grin on her face. But don't worry about the whole attacking the village thing if you were being controlled then don't worry about it was not your fault. Thank you Anko-chan. 
I will show you what I really look like when we get back to the bridge builder house. The fox says happy. Whoa you have a human form? Asked Anko with stars in her eyes. Yes she does and let me be the first to say she is just beautiful she took my breath away. This makes the fox hide in Naruto's armor from embarrassment. Okay we wasted enough time taking that guy's head and we can get his bounty and sword for a bunch of money. With that done the trio jumps off back into the trees to get to the location before anything else happens that can stop them from making it to their location. Tazuna's house Sasuke and Sakura can be seen outside standing over the makeshift grave they made for their teammate who died in the early run in the group had with Zabuza turns out he was not able to dodge the cleave sword Zabuza had thrown at the death did not seem to affect Sasuke that much but it was a different story for Sakura who was crying at his death. Their sensei was recovering in a spare room in one of the rooms upstairs in the house. Come on Sakura, we have to go, we cannot be out here forever. But Sasuke-kun don't you feel sad about our teammate? She says with a few tears in his eyes. No I don't, this is what happens when you are weak so you better step it up or you could end up just like him. He says uncaring to her. Would you be sad if I died, Sasuke-kun? She said hopefully. No, he says walking away leaving the pink-haired girl to cry alone. She follows him silently back to the house so they can welcome the team that comes to back them up because they both know they could use any kind of help on this mission because they already lost a fellow ninja and Sakura was starting to take in all she has done since becoming a ninja. Maybe Sasuke-kun was correct and I need to start training seriously now and then. Maybe Sasuke-kun will fall in love with me and we can help rebuild his clan. A little blood drops from her nose at the things she is thinking the two will do while inner Sakura is shaking her head. Why don't you just leave that asshole alone and focus on Naruto-kun? Did you see how handsome he has gotten these past two months I could just? She is cut off by Sakura who screams and shakes her head to make her shut up. No. I don't see him like that although I will admit he has gotten really handsome over these past two months, but you've seen how he has been holding hands with that purple-haired woman he does not want to be with us anymore. Yes you are right but you can at least be friends with him and maybe he can help us with our training so that way we can actually make something out of ourselves. Yes I will be nicer to him and apologize for all the things I did, she says with a little smile. While Sasuke just eyes her weirdly from all the facial faces she was making, he just shakes it off and gets back to thinking of ways he can have Kakashi sensei train him. One hour later, finally, it feels like we have been running forever. I am so tired. The orange-tailed fox says waving her front paws in exaggeration. What are you complaining about? You didn't even do anything, you were just on my shoulder the whole time, he says with a sweat drop on his head at her antics. But I still had to deal with you always jumping from tree to tree. Why did you do that instead of just fly us here? She gave him a questioning gaze. Well it kinda slipped my mind I didn't think of it, he said, rubbing the back of his head, only to be hit by both Anko and Kasumi. Naruto-kun sometimes you can be as smart as a Nara and then sometimes be dumber than a sack of rocks, said the snake mistress. Come on Kasumi-chan, let's leave him here, Anko said, opening her arms for the fox to jump into. W wait Kasumi-chan how could you leave me out to dry like this, he says with waterfall tears coming out of his eyes. Get up you let's just regroup with these fools and get the mission over with, she says dragging him with one of her tails. Knock knock. Anko says, hitting the door a couple times. Why do you say knock knock while hitting the door? Naruto said, sweat dropping at her childish antics. Because it's fun, came the short reply from Anko. Coming. A female voice said from the other side of the door and feet could be heard shuffling to the door. The door cracked open slightly and a woman with long black hair with a dark blue tent and black eyes could be seen peeking her head out. Hello, how may I help you? She says with a kind smile trying to ease her nervousness from the two humans and one fox on top of the purple-haired lady's head. We are Team 11 and we are the backup for Team 7. My name is Anko Mitarashi and this is my student Naruto Uzumaki. A smack from a paw on her head makes her remember the orange fox on her head. Oh yeah this is Kasumi-chan, our team mascot. A bite to her ear lets her know she didn't like that comment. Tsunami can't help but sweat drop at the human and fox butting heads and snots with each other. Okay thank you for coming to help assist us. It seems they already lost a teammate on the way over here and it seems it has affected the pink haired girl named Sakura very much. They all look at her with shock. Wow I didn't think we would already start losing classmates so fast. 
He then clenches his fist and grabs Anko's hand. I'll never let anything happen to her on my watch. Anko, seeing this can't help but smile and thank Kami in her head for a good boyfriend. Kasumi-chan. Naruto calls the vixen using their mind link. Yes, Naruto-kun? Replied the vixen with a question tone. Is it okay if we practice how to use some of your chakra? He asked. This catches her off guard because he has never asked for her power since she has been sealed in him. Okay Naruto-kun but you really don't need my power, you are already able to beat every ninja in the village. You might only struggle with the old Hokage because of all the years of experience he has over you. Thank you Kasumi-chan you are the best, he says giving her a smile that makes her blush and turn her head, making him chuckle. May we come in now to talk to the others, said Anko talking to Tsunami. Oh yes I am sorry please come in. I was just about to start dinner, she says giving them a warm smile. Oh you were about to cook, that is great I was getting really hungry as well with all the running we did to get here, he says rubbing his stomach walking into the house. Well great but before that can one of you accompany me to the market I would like some help. Don't worry about Tsunami-san it would be my pleasure to accompany such a lovely lady to the market. This makes the mother smile while Anko sends him a wink. Oot thank you for the compliment. The mother turns red faced at what the handsome blonde said to her. What are you doing here dead last? We don't need help from you, said one duck butt avenger. Naruto rolls his eyes at the pitiful Uchiha. Clearly you don't remember what I said last time someone called me. And without much more being said Naruto kicks him in the face leaving a imprint of his foot on his face. Naruto Baka but she stops when she remembered what she had said earlier and just walks up to him and gives him a weak punch in his blue armor that barely does anything. Um ouch. He says confused, we can talk later. I want to ask you something, she says looking at him sadly. Okay just wake up your stupid sensei and tell him we made it while I go with the lovely mother over here. Tsunami blushes again and tries to hide her face with her hands. Father. I am leaving for the market with one of the ninjas. Okay. Be safe and get some for alcohol. A voice sounded from the backyard. Bye mom, be safe. A little boy with a bucket hat on his head says, giving her a small smile. He then looks at Naruto and snorts and runs away. S sorry about my son, he's just having a tough time right now. She says giving Naruto a sad smile. Don't sweat it tsunami let's just go get what you need and then we can eat some food. Bye Naruto-kun be safe. Waved Anko and the fox together. Streets wave, wow, how long has this been going on now? Naruto asks Tsunami looking around at all the people on the street in the worst condition possible. It reminded him of how his younger life used to be growing up. It's been like this for a little over two years now and it's only getting worse thanks to that damn Gato. A little angry at how her country was suffering thanks to some idiot. A tap against Naruto's back pocket and he can see what looks like a little girl running away with his wallet into an alley. Tsunami someone just stole my wallet. I'll leave a clone with you to make sure you are alright. I will be back. Oh okay Naruto just don't hurt the children. He then runs off after her into the alley only to stop at what he sees. The black haired girl is giving his money away to kids around her age and telling to go buy some food. She then ran further down and tossed his wallet in the trash and went into what looks like a box under some rubble. He walks over to her to get a better view of the girl. A short and petite girl with light skin and purple eyes. Her hair is black, with several strands that reach to the bottom of her neck and one bang that goes down the middle of her face to her chin. She hears him and looks up at him with surprise only to shake it off and get in a makeshift fighting style. Naruto can't help but smile at her and think to himself. Oh yeah she has got a spark in her. But it also makes him a little sad at the fact that a girl only nine has to fight, which means this is not the first time someone has found her. Hello there you remember me you just robbed me and gave all my money away. He says getting on one knee getting eye to eye with the little girl. Yes I do and it was for a good cause. She replied without even being feared. Naruto smiles even more at her attitude. Man, I said the same thing when I stole that food and gave it to Panda Chan at the orphanage. I hope she is doing well. He chuckles at her and then sits down much to her confusion. I am not going to do anything to you. Okay I did the same thing when I was your age. He says giving her a sad smile making her lower her defense a little bit. What are you talking about? I am nine so are you telling me you also used to live on the streets? She says, eyeing him. Yup. 
But you have on a leaf headband you must have had a good life in your nice comfortable village that is said to be the strongest. She gives him a glare. He shakes his head at her. That's just what they say when people visit and only go to the rich part of the village and they talk about how the will of fire and mighty heroes fought to make the village what it is now. Truth is that fire is slowly dying down and being corrupted but that's why I'm here to make the village what it used to be when everyone was happy and no one suffered. Why are you telling me this? She asked, sitting down in front of him. Because I was once like you, I too had to fight for my life and started stealing and giving what I had to those who needed it. All while getting nothing in return but empty promises. She looks down at his words because it is true. B but I don't do it just to get a thank you. These people need this and I am just simply helping them. He smiles at her. What is your name, little girl? He asked, giving her a warm smile that made her feel comforted. Rukia. She says with pride sticking her chest out a little bit. Making Naruto laugh at her causing Rukia to pout only to be replaced with a chuckle until she starts to laugh with him. If someone were to see this scene it would look like a father and daughter having a nice time. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. He grins at her and she does the same. Well Rukia-chan, would you come with me and let me help you for a change? Give her a fatherly smile that makes her feel comfortable again. Why yes. She hesitantly takes his hand hesitantly not wanting this to be a trick. Only to be surprised when he pulls onto his neck and he holds her legs while she has her hand in his hair. H hey what do you think you're doing? She says from the top of his head. I am going to take you shopping Rukia-chan, we can't have you in those rags forever now can we? This makes the black-haired girl surprised at this. But I thought I gave all your money away, she is a little sad at the last part. Ha I have extra money in a seal I keep on my thumb. He unseals the money much to her shock. Naruto. What are seals and how did you do that? Seals are an art that ninjas use to do battle or in my case seal things away you can do a whole bunch of things with seals. Wow. Are you any good at using seals? She asked in a questioning tone. Am I any good? I'll have you know I am a seal master of the highest caliber. Cool do you think you can teach me seals? She says a little shyly. Naruto looks up at her and then grins. Of course I can teach you seals. Do you have good handwriting? This makes her look down. No, I do not know how to write. I can only read. Ah don't worry I'll teach you everything. He gives a warm smile. Now what kind of clothes would you like to wear Rukia-chan? Um I would like a kimono. I've always wanted one of those. Well then let's go get you one. He then starts to walk the streets of Wave looking for any stores that would have what he is looking for to get Rukia while also giving away some of his foods to the people of Wave who need it. They eventually find a store and they go in to see the poor state the store is in. Okay Rukia Chan go find something you want and I'll tell you what looks good. She nudes and then runs off looking at the clothes. The storekeeper, a middle-aged man, whispers to Naruto. You know sir I think it's really nice what you are doing for that young girl. She is always stealing from Gado's men and giving people of wave the food and money and barely taking enough for herself. When she isn't lucky they would beat her up but she would always try to fight back but as a little girl she wasn't able to do much. The man says a little sadly, Naruto clenches his fist at what the man is telling him. I'll be damned if I let one of those bastards lay a finger on her. He thinks to himself, making his eyes change from ocean blue to blood red for a second. Hey Naruto. What do you think of this one? Does it look good on me? She is wearing a purple kimono with white snowflakes on it. A navy blue obi that wraps around her waist along with white slip-on sandals. It looks beautiful you little snow princess. Naruto says to her, making her give him a bright smile that makes his eyes a little watery but he shakes it off before anyone notices. He then walks to the cashier and gives him a little extra which makes the man bow his head and thank him. Okay Rukia-chan let's get you something to eat. He then picks her up and puts her on his shoulder again. What are we gonna eat Naruto? Well I am staying here for a mission and this nice lady named Tsunami will be making food for us. A mission? She asks him, yup, the leader of my village gave my team a mission to come out here and I will go back home when it's done. He says not noticing her small frown at his last statement. Hey, you want to help me catch some more food for Tsunami I can show you a cool trick. Yay I do. She says, giving a smile again. Only to be surprised when Naruto jumps on top of the roof and starts to jump from roof to roof. Nn Naruto this is really bumpy. She gets out flying up and down on Naruto's shoulder. Okay how about I fly then? He gives a foxy smile. 
You can't fly, that's impossible. Only to be shocked when Naruto takes off in the air making her scream. Tazuna's house. Hello everyone I am back. Said Tsunami letting everyone know she is back. Finally will you get started on dinner now I'm hungry. The old drunk says coming stumbling out of the kitchen. Hey where is Naruto? Asked the copy cat ninja Kakashi. Oh someone stole his wallet and he went after her leaving a clone with me that just poofed in smoke. Well I hope he hurries up. It's getting dark outside. Anko says worriedly. Mama now I'm sure your little boyfriend can take care of himself. He is a big boy. Kakashi says trying to tease Anko only to have to dodge a snake that came flying at him. Everyone stopped when they could hear screaming and laughter coming from outside and they all went outside even the emo Inari. Only for the family and team 7 to drop their jaws at what they are seeing. It's Naruto flying, doing tricks and laughing at the girl on his back. He then flies down to the ground so they can go inside. And Naruto w why would you do that if you were flying too fast? She then falls face first. Only to get up and chase the laughing blonde around trying to punch his lights out. Naruto kun. The shout of a running Anko and Fox coming snap them out of their fun. Hello Anko chan. Kasumi chan everyone. Okay. He says getting a kiss from Anko and a lick from the Fox. Ew she just put her lips on your Naruto. She says making a yuck face at what they were doing. It's called a kiss. You do it to people you love. He says to her with a grin. Everyone else is just watching them in confusion. You guys did see him flying around right? A pinket said. Everyone knows at that. Sasuke and Inari walk off to be emo to the sadness of the two girls. Later we can find everyone at the dinner table finishing the dinner of cooked fish and rice thanks to all the fish Naruto caught. Naruto was sitting at the end of the table with Rukia in his lap and Kasumi on his head again. Anko to his left looking at him and Rukia with a blush think about how a good father Naruto would is at the other end of the table looking at Naruto with a small smile with Inari next to him who has a scowl. Tsunami across from him who has a look in her eyes at seeing her son. Team 7 is on the other side of the table. Okay guys I have some important things to say about our mission. Kakashi says, closing his book looking at everyone. Zabuza is still alive. He did not die like we thought he did and that hunter ninja is helping him and he most likely taking a week to recover like me. Tazuna's family gasps along with team 7. Well good thing you guys called us or you would be in real trouble. Naruto says smirking, making Sasuke angry. We don't need you dead last. Sasuke covers his mouth quickly. He then sees Naruto grinning evilly. Don't worry dude I can't get you right now. Sasuke sighs until he looks to the left only to be kicked in the face by a shadow clone of Naruto which makes him and the fox start to laugh while everyone else holds in their laughter a little bit. Sasuke-kun are you okay? Sakura says going over to him to help him only to be pushed away. I don't need your help weakling. He walks upstairs. I am going to bed. Well I think we all should go to bed as well. Naruto says picking up Rukia. Tsunami-chan. The dinner was great. Is there a place where we can sleep? She blushes at what he said. Why yes and thank you, allow me to show you where it is. He follows her along with Anko and the fox which Kakashi eyes with a suspicious gaze wondering if it is what he thinks it is. Naruto places Rukia in the futon and walks away only to stop when she gets up and hugs him saying thank you. Naruto returns her hug with a smile. Naruto then walks out the room only to see Anko smiling at him who gives him a smirk. You are like a father to that girl and I think she likes it, you do know that we are gonna have to leave this place right? She tells him. He sighs at this. Yes I do know and I think I will ask to adopt her and come back with us to the leaf. But they don't know Rukia is listening to this and is crying tears of happiness and can't believe this. She then runs out and jumps on Naruto and laughs. Yes, I would love to be your daughter Papa. She says still crying which makes Naruto also cry with happiness. Okay my daughter. Anko and Kasumi watch this with smiles on their faces. It is early in the morning at the house of Tazuna and we can see all the applicants of the house begging to wake up while some are still trying to get in extra hours of sleep. Kakashi is already up and getting some early morning reads in before anyone can interrupt him. Sakura is still sleep mumbling about nonsense. Sasuke is up doing morning workouts thinking of his brother. Inari can be seen walking the halls to his mother's room. Tsunami is just waking up to make breakfast for everyone. Tazuna is on the floor passed out from too much drinking. Anko is sprawled out in her futon with one leg out and a plushie of Naruto close to her. 
Naruto is in the futon with one Rukia attached to his right arm with blinking eyes seeing where she is. Wow. That was the best sleep I have ever had in my life. She says looking around with sleepy eyes until she remembers what happened last night, so it wasn't a dream I really have a D dad. She then tries to shake Naruto awake but he doesn't budge. An evil smile appears on her face. So you don't want to wake up ha huh, papa? Well I know how to wake you up. She then gets up silently and stands over Naruto evil grin still in place. She then jumps up as high as she can and comes down screaming. Wake up! She comes down with an elbow drop to his stomach. This causes Naruto to shoot up with wide eyes and he can hear a laughing Kasumi in his head. Rukia chan what W was that for? He was able to get out through labored breath. Rukia could only stand there with a smirk in place at what she did to her dad. That thought makes her smile. Good morning daddy I just needed you to wake up so you can teach me how to write like you said you would. This causes Naruto to smile at her and pulls her into a hug. Good morning to you as well baby. He then kisses her on the top of her head. He then puts her in a headlock and gives her a nuggy. This is the scene one Anko walks in on and can't help but smile at them. Well, you two seem to be having fun, Anko says with a grin leaning against the door. Well when you two are done I would like to let you know that everyone else is up and Kakashi wants to talk about training. Okay Anko-chan we will be down when we get dressed, he says getting up only for Anko to turn around with a red face at what she saw. Oh my god he's so big it was sticking out of his boxers. Maybe I should check again to be sure I saw what I saw was real. Only to sigh sadly because he put on orange jogging pants and a black long sleeve. Okay Rukia-chan I'll teach you how to write and a little about seals while we wait for dinner. They then walk out but not before giving Anko a peck on the lips. They made their way downstairs saying good morning to everyone getting replies even from Sakura. Naruto sits at the table and Rukia in his lap jumping with excitement at learning how to write. Okay papa. I am ready. What do we do first? She says looking at him with a smile. This is a scroll I use to write seals in and I want you to practice writing your name. Let me show you how it is done first. He then writes her name on the scroll. Now you go. She then takes the brush and starts to concentrate so hard she even sticks her tongue out to the side of her mouth much to the amusement of everyone else. They then spend 45 minutes teaching her how to write and she is able to write her name fast while making all the letters in the alphabet. Okay teams I have some training I want us to do. He says with his eye smile to everyone in the room. My team, we will be doing something that can increase the efficiency of your jutsu. This goat Sasuke up and ready to go immediately while Sakura also had a fire in her eyes much to the happiness of Kakashi. He looks at Anko and Naruto still helping Rukia. Anko does Naruto already know the basic exercise, this causes her to grin at him. Kakashi, he can fly. I think that's all you need to hear. Naruto-kun, I want you to do some training as well. Work on some more water manipulation. You mentioned you couldn't make waves in a still lake yet, well now is your chance she says to him, making him understand. Okay Rukia-chan how about we unlock your chakra and teach you how to walk on trees while you see how awesome your dad is, he says giving her a foxy smile. Really we can unlock my chakra that will be so cool. She then jumps up and gives him hugs and kisses all over his face making everyone laugh except Sasuke and Inari who have scowls. Why are you even trying? You're just going to die anyway, there is no hope for us, he says running off with tears in his eyes. But before he can get away Naruto hits him in the head with a water bullet that makes him fall. Watch your mouth brat you haven't even seen what I'm fully capable of, he says giving him a smirk to help cheer him up, only for it not to work and Inari still ran off. Then Rukia hits him in the head. Papa, that was not nice you hit that boy in the head and he was already about to cry. Causing him to sulk his head and everyone else to laugh at him. Outside. Okay Rukia-chan just focus on the inside of your body and you should feel it inside of your body and when you feel it I want you to grab it and then pull it until it explodes out of your body. He explains to her. Okay daddy I will give it my all. She then begins to concentrate, sticking her tongue out again making him think how cute she looks. Only for him to look at his leg and see Kasumi between his legs in her fox form. What is it Kasumi-chan want to see my daughter kick ass? He asked, smirking at her. Yes I also want to tell you about your mother, she says to the wide-eyed Naruto. She was my previous container and best friend but when she was giving birth to you she was kidnapped by some masked man and I already told you about that masked guy. She says looking at Rukia who is now sweating from what's happening. Did she love me? He asked her, feeling a little worried about something he always wanted to know. 
This makes Kasumi smile at him. Love isn't even the right word. She was overjoyed to be a mother. She was up all night talking to me about all the things she was going to teach you. Most of the time I wouldn't listen because she would just go on and on. She says laughing at the end. Naruto sheds a little tears at what he is hearing about his mother and that she loved him. What was her name? He asked a little more control of himself. Her name was Kashina Uzumaki, part of the Uzumaki clan which makes you the heir to her clan, she says smirking. I knew I was from some kind of clan. The things I had just made it impossible for me to be some average child, especially if I was able to hold the queen of the biju. He says at the end giving Kasumi a smirk, making her stick her fox chest out. They are snapped back to Rukia when she releases chakra as much as a high chunin would have, making the two go wide at her. Dad, I did it, my chakra is unlocked. I can feel it all over my body. I feel like I can do anything. Running around and throwing punches and kicks in the air. Kasumi chan, is it me or does her chakra feel kind of cold to you? He said to her how cold the air got because of her chakra. Yes, Naruto kun, I can feel she is a Yuki and has the power of ice. Okay, Rukia chan, that is good now. I need you to focus your chakra in your feet and walk up the tree like this. He then shows her how it is done. Okay, I have my own training to do, so I'll leave some clones with you, and if you need me, just tell a clone and tell me. He say making 100 clones to go train with him. Okay, Dad, when I am done, I'll be up the tree with no hands. Giving him a nice guy pose, making an echo of youth sound in the distance. Later that day, we can find Naruto in what seems to be an ocean that used to be a lake. There are massive waves, and laughter can be heard along with the chance of someone saying they finally did it. A massive wave 20 feet tall is about to crash down, and we can see our blonde hero surfing the wave with a shit eating grin on his face along with his laughter. Ha ha ha, and they called me a madman. They were right, this is so fun, I should take the gang to do this surfing thing I just came up with. He then jumps off the top of the wave and crashes in the water. Okay now I just need to finish the final step of water manipulation which is making the flow of a waterfall reverse and I'll be a master. I think I can go back now it is getting pretty late. He says looking at the setting sun. I wonder what tsunami chan is making for dinner, some good food is what I need right now. He then flies off to the house of Tazuna with a smirk at giving a nice show to the spy. A girl about his age with long black hair and soft brown eyes which are currently wide as saucers at what she just saw. I have to tell Zabuza Sama what I just saw. If he is their backup, we will most likely not win. She then runs off to do just as she had said. Tazuna's house. Damn girl, can you get off the ceiling already? You're leaving footprints all on my ceiling. A slightly drunk Tazuna shaking his fist at the girl who is sitting on the ceiling, smiling. Why don't you make me, you old drunk? She says, giving him the middle finger that she learned from Anko who is over at the table laughing with Tsunami who has a hand over her mouth trying to stop herself from laughing while Sakura is holding her stomach laughing. Tazuna goes red with anger and walks away mumbling about bad children. Hello everyone. The handsome and badass ninja has come back from his training. Naruto says in a soaked black t-shirt and white jogging pants with his ninja sandals. The wet shirt is hugging his muscles making all the girls stare even Sakura. Daddy. You're finally back. Said a giggling Rukia who dropped from the ceiling landing on top of his head with a smile still on her face. Hey I see you got the tree walking exercise down that's really great. He says rubbing her head much to her excitement. I also learned something else. She then shows him her middle finger. Anko Chan showed me how to do this. Naruto then slowly turns his head to Anko who is sweating nervously at the look Naruto is giving her. Anko Chan, why are you teaching my daughter such bad habits? W. Well, she asked me to learn some hand signs and I thought I should teach her that for perverts, she says, trying to defend herself from the wrath of her father. Not a good enough answer. I think I will give you 50 spankings tonight as your punishment, he says, grinning at Anko, who blushes and is scared at the same time. And now there is no need for any of that, and Naruto kun, she says, hoping to stop him from doing that to her. No, I will, but now let's eat. I'm sure Tsunami chan has made us some good food. He says quickly sitting at the table with Rukia in his lap. Oh Naruto-kun, you are too kind. Tsunami says red-faced. Everyone sits down and starts eating, laughing and everyone talking about how their day went and what else they have planned. So while I was out training I made a whole ocean and invented this new thing called surfing and it is really fun. It can get the blood pumping and helps with control, he says laughing at the shock of everyone. Naruto-kun, can you show me please? I want to surf. 
Anko says giving him the puppy dog eyes. Only to be disappointed when he turned his head just in time. Papa you will take me right. Rukia says giving him the puppy eyes. Ah how could I say no to my little snow princes. Naruto says rubbing his face against hers making her giggle only to be stopped when a hand is slammed on the table. What is wrong with you people? Why are you just sitting here laughing and talking about all this training like it will ever amount to anything you're all just gonna die so you should just give up? He says yelling at everyone. Ah come on kid I'll take you surfing as well if that is why you are so mad. He says laughing at him. Shut up. You are sitting here laughing and playing around. You don't know anything about this country or what it's like to suffer. You live in your comfortable village without a care in the world, you don't know how hard we have it. He screams glaring down at Naruto who had stopped laughing and now had his head down and eyes shadowed by his hair. His one smiling face had been replaced with a deep scowl on his face, one of the likes anyone has never seen beside Anko and Kasumi. Don't know how hard we have it, don't know what it is like to suffer, as he is talking the winds pick up thunder starts to sound off the waves outside start to clash violently. You really don't know how good you have it, do you? You foolish child. You have a mother at home who gets up and cleans up after you and your grandfather, a mother who worries about you, a mother who helps you when you are hurt, a grandfather who is putting his life on the line just so people like you who are too scared to do any work can live happily. He says all of this while the storm picks up and his hair changes white for a second. While the occupants of the room worry for their safety. When I was your age I was on the streets fighting for my life just to find a place to sleep and put food in my stomach. Fighting the people I am sworn to protect. But did I complain no I didn't I kept getting back on my feet. He says with all in an electrified tone scaring everyone and even Rukia a little bit who is looking at her dad in horror. For a reason I had no idea about until two months ago from a traitor who tried to kill me and someone I hold close to me. When was the last time you went into that town boy? There are kids your age and younger who are on the streets starving struggling just to make it past this week. He then gets up and sets the wide-eyed Rukia in Anko's arm who is giving him a sad smile with a couple tears in the corner of her eyes. He then kisses them both. Daddy will be back later I have to, clear my head. He walks outside and a lighting bolt strikes him and then he's gone. Leaving everyone speechless. K. Kakashi Sensei, did all that really happen to him? Sakura asked in a shaky tone not wanting to believe what she was hearing. No Sakura it was much worse. Naruto was often in the hospital when the villagers would gang up on him and he would have to fight back. He says, shocking everyone. This makes Rukia clench her fist and she makes a vowel to protect her dad. You know when Naruto found me I stole all his money and gave it away. Rukia speaks up with tears going down her face. I was living in a box and barely had food and clothes to eat but I never let it stop me because that's what cowards do and Rukia Uzumaki is no coward, she says running upstairs to the room she shares with her dad. Most smile at what the young girl says while Tsunami, Inari and Sakura are still shedding tears. Why didn't anyone help him and I was so mean to him I just feel so terrible. Sakura cries more when remembering how she treated him. That loser was just joking he was always pulling pranks and running around with that stupid smile on his face. Sasuke says only to be shocked when he is slapped by an angry Anko he is sending him massive ki making him shake like a leaf. Kakashi grabs her to calm her down only to be pushed off. I'm going to Rukia Chan. Kami knows she needs someone to help her with her daddy problems. Anko says walking upstairs leaving everyone to do whatever they want. I think it's best if we all go to sleep. We have some more training to do tomorrow. Kakashi speaks up clapping his hands and everyone goes to their rooms. Next morning it was the morning after Naruto had his little outburst at Inari. He just had to get away. He didn't mean to yell at the kid like that. He had to get away from his daughter who was scared of him. Will she leave me now that she has seen me like that? Will she think I'm a monster? He asked in a scared tone. The once forest Naruto was in now looks like a storm came through but with Naruto I guess that is not far from the truth in his case. The once tall trees were all destroyed and laying on the ground with some looking like they were hit by lighting. Naruto's clothes had scratch marks all on his clothes cuts and dirt on his face. This was the scene Haku Yuki came and was looking for some herbs for her master. That's the boy I saw yesterday, what is he doing out in the forest? This is my chance to get rid of him because Zabuza Sama didn't believe me. She thinks a little irritated at her master. Hovering a hand over to him she is surprised when something unexpected happens to her. Eep. A girlish sound comes from her lips when Naruto pulls her down and puts her against him. Her face is as red as a tomato. 
Something like this has never happened to her. She can hear him mumbling about how she was some plushy Chan. Ee -e excuse me Mr. Can Yup please let me go. She says red face when getting a feel of his body. What? Why would I let such a beautiful girl out of my arms, a smirk playing on his lips. B but I I am a boy. Trying to lie to make her way out of this position. Yay that might work on some bandits but it will not work on me. So tell me, did you come back to try and spy on me again? He says, giving her a foxy smirk. This causes her to go wide-eyed before making ice senbon and jamming them in his chest and jumping back getting in a position with more senbon in her hand. Ow that hurt. Pulling the senbon out of his hand he then floats up. You know you should give your name before stabbing someone. Unbothered by the fact that he had just pulled senbon out of his chest. My end name is Haku. She is a little surprised at how he just pulled those out of his chest. Well Haku-chan my name is Naruto Uzumaki but you can call me Naruto-kun. Giving her a charming smile makes her blush a bit. On a serious note you are a Yuki clan member who can use ice release. Haku just nodded a little shocked at how he knew that because not many people were aware of that. Yes, I am and I am the last of my clan. She then goes to tell him about how her clan was killed by the civil war in Kiri and how her own dad tried to kill her and her mother but she got away. Naruto can sympathize with her and feels a sort of kinship with her. He then goes to tell her about his life and how they are kind of similar. They then spend another hour just talking and telling each other's funny story until Naruto drops a bomb on her. Haku chan. I believe you are not the last member of your clan. My daughter, I believe, has the ice release. She is next to him in an instant with hope in her eyes at maybe finding some family. D, do you really mean it, Naruto kun? How can you be sure? Well when she unlocked her chakra the area got a little colder and her chakra also feels a little similar to yours because they both have that cold feeling to it. Haku shed a couple tears because the same thing happened to her. I I don't believe this I always thought I was the only one left, but she is a part of my clan. After this little mission is over can I meet her? Haku asked, giving Naruto the puppy dog eyes with tears and a quivering lip almost as good as his daughter. Okay but you just have to try not to die and tell Zabuza to hurry up because I want to test his blade against one of the seven and see how good I am with my blade. Okay Naruto-kun, just be careful when you fight him he is really strong. Naruto smirked at her which unnerved her a bit. Oh Haku-chan, I thank you for worrying about me so much, maybe I should give you a reward. He trails a finger up her side and trails a hand to her chest but Haku backs up red-faced and panting. Nn Naruto kun, we should not do that. I have to go. She then runs off with the basket of herbs, and a chuckle can be heard from Naruto. Well, let's get up and get going before they send a watch party after me. Taking off in a bolt of lighting, he makes his way to town for a gift to apologize to Anko and Rukia. To Zuna's house. I swear, when he gets back here, I am going to feed him to my snakes. Anko could be seen pacing back. Not to mention, I didn't get my spankings. Rukia could be seen pacing with Anko as well. When Papa gets back here he is going to get introduced to my fist, she says bumping her fist together. Hello guys I am back. Did you miss me? Only to have to dodge snakes and punches from his daughter. Hey, what is going on here? Dodging an attack he grabs both of them in a hug and they start to sniffle a little bit and he hugs them tighter. Look I got you guys some gifts to make it up to you. Pulling out the gifts they are both shocked at what they see. For Rukia it is a bunny onesie suit and for Anko it is a black trench coat with purple flames at the bottom. They both jump and give him kisses on the cheek. They both say thank you to him but are interrupted when Sakura comes over to Naruto a little nervously. Naruto, can we go talk somewhere please? She asked hesitantly. Sure we can bubblegum. He rubs her hair, messing it up making a tick mark appear on his head. They walk upstairs but not before giving Rukia a kiss on the head and Anko a kiss on the lips and a slap to the ass. The two go into Sakura's room and Naruto can't help but try to tease her about it. Wow Sakura-chan if you wanted to get me in your room by yourself all you had to do was ask, he says in a Y tone causing her to turn the color of her hair and inner Sakura to pass out with a nosebleed at all the things she just pictured. Nn no iij just wanted to say get some things off my chest you know. She says waving her hands and face still red. Well there is not much to get off your chest so we won't have a problem. Causing a tick mark to appear on her head. Naruto Baka can you just listen to me? She yells trying not to hit him. He laughs at her and then just smiles and motions her to go on ahead. 
I just want to say that I am sorry for having treated you the way I did and always being mean to you and hitting you for no reason. My eyes have been opened to the world a little bit at how the ninja world and how people are now. I realize Sasuke kun, no Sasuke isn't the person I thought he was. I want to be a better ninja and person and I want to know if you can help me with that. She says to Naruto with a straight face. Naruto can only stand there with a stoic face and unmoving posture unnerving her a little. He then smiles at her and she gives him a little smile back. Don't worry Sakura I forgive you but I can't feel the same way about you the way I used to. But it is obvious you don't have a strong male in your life so I will be that for you. You can now call me big brother or Oni-chan. For Sakura's part she can't help but let out how this has gone. Okay big bro, and will you help me with training? Naruto wraps her in a bear hug picking her up. Of course I will when I am done with you Tsunade Senju will be nothing compared to you. She hugs him back feeling relieved and happy at how this planned out. Naruto then moves his hands down to her butt giving a squeeze making her go red in the face. Wow Sakura, no wonder your chest is flat, everything is going down to your ass. Sakura is red with anger and embarrassment at this. Get your hands off me, pervy big brother, she hits him in the head and huffs and walks off. Damn she hits as hard as ever. This is gonna be a fun week. I'll run her in the ground for all those hits. He gives an evil chuckle that goes through all of the house making everyone shudder even Kasumi who is in the seal watching all this. A week has passed in wave country and all the citizens were noticing small changes around the town such as the lack of Gado's men in the food markets would have a bunch of fish outside of their stores with notes attached. Waves make way for storms and a storm is coming. The note read and many of the citizens began to hope again only if just a little. The kids were no longer on the streets there was a huge house for the kids to live in and some adults to help take care of them. Food, clothes, and furniture was in the house. All thanks to Naruto making a bunch of clones that went back to the village which was only a three hour trip with him flying at his full speed. That didn't mean he still didn't train, he often had clones go to the bridge to help Tizuna who was having a hard time with the lack of workers. He trained his wind element some more because out of his three elements it was his weakest and he wanted to fix that because he had some wind jutsu he wanted to use like wind dragons and wind tornadoes and so on. Sakura also kept to her word and started taking her training more seriously and even tried to calm down on her fangirl tendencies towards Sasuke who didn't seem to notice. Naruto often made her work out with him which left her unkinesis by the end of the day and she would wake up and yell at her Oni-san for making her run 50 laps and do 100 push-ups and sit up with resistance seals. That is another thing he worked on was seals, he was now able to make his own resistance seals something he was excited to try because he saw it made your overall body stronger by buffing your speed, reaction, and durability. He applied them to Anko, Kakashi, and Sakura he didn't. T want to tell Sasuke. He set Anko. Kakashi and himself to level 3 which felt like they were moving through sand and it was even hard to fly at first but he was just glad he didn't apply the gravity seals yet, he was saving that for when he got back to the village. Rukia Aslo did training with them doing all the physical training and chakra control and much to the dismay of Sakura even Rukia could outlast her in stamina but it only made her work harder which made Naruto happy at his new little sister's determination. Rukia also showed great skill in swordsmanship and Naruto promised to get her a real sword when they go back to the village but for now she used a wooden sword. It was not just all training he often played with Rukia and Anko getting to learn more about them such as, Rukia's birthday was January 14th and she had an older sister who was killed by Gato because she did not want to work for him. This only made Naruto want to rip his heart out even more. He learned her favorite was animals and she wanted a pet rabbit to name Chappie. He learned Anko had a soft spot for rabbits often leading to Anko squeezing Rukia's head in between her breast when she would wear her bunny onesie Naruto got her much to her embarrassment. Naruto and Rukia could be seen spread out on the futon with the sheets all over the place. Rukia had a leg over Naruto's face which had a bunny head at the end of it. Naruto had one of his legs across her back. Both of them were snoring, often waking up Anko who was next to them. Tsunami walked in the room and only sweat dropped at what looked like the two were fighting in their sleep. She went to wake up Rukia but she was kicked by her other leg pushing her back some. Ninjas are so weird, she thinks walking to Naruto to wake him up only to be surprised again. Eep, she let out a gasp because Naruto pulled her down and was now spooning her making her go red in the face. Oh my Kami what is he doing pulling me down like this I hope no one sees this. She tries to wiggle out of his grasp but only makes it worse by rubbing her butt on Naruto's crotch making him moan in his sleep. 
NN Naruto kun, could you please wake up your team has left. She says being able to turn around in his arms. Getting to look at his face so close to hers she can't help but to blush even more at how handsome she looks. Moving her face closer to his, she moves back when he starts to wake up. T Tsunami Chan. What are you doing here? Blinking a couple of times he can see Rukia sleeping on her stomach in a T position. Turning back to Tsunami he grins at seeing her blush in the position the two are in. Tsunami Chan if you wanted to get in bed with me all you had to do was ask, he says pulling her closer to him making his harding crotch brush her wedding folds making her go red and breath a bit heavily. NN Naruto Kun W we should not do this right now why your team said to meet them at the bridge, she got through labored breaths because Naruto started laying kisses on her face and neck. Okay Tsunami Chan I'll go, but when I get back this ass is mine. He says giving it a smack making her pass out due to nose bleed. Rukia Chan wake up daddy has to go. I want you to stay here and protect the house for me while I go to the bridge. Giving a kiss to her forehead he leaves a blinking Rukia and a still passed out tsunami in the room. He sees Inari who has warmed up to him after he apologized for how he acted and what he said. Good morning Inari I have to go make sure you stay the man of the house for me while I'm gone. He rubs his hair and tosses him a kanai. Use that on anyone who threatens what you hold dear. Oh okay Naruto you can count on me. Inari replied with determination. Naruto then walks out the front door and makes 10 sealless shadow clones to watch the house just in case. He then jumps in the trees going to the bridge. Bridge, damn I knew I should have woken Naruto up that emo duckbutt is getting beat up and not to mention Zabuza called for backup and it just had to be Raiga Kurosukiya who keeps talking about funerals, he train of thought is cut off when she had to dodge a blade swing from Zabuza and water dragon from Raiga. Damn I am glad we took those seals off or this would be even worse for us, Anko said, jumping back to back with Kakashi. Yes you are right and our new speed isn't helping us much because we don't have a windjutsu strong enough to blast away this mist. What's wrong Kakashi? Sherigan not helping you see through the mist. A chuckling Zabuza could be heard through the mist. Yes, your funeral will be amazing. The insane Raiga said laughing. Raiga, someone is coming and they are really strong. The sound came from the back of Raiga as what looked like a boy under a blanket. Renmara, who is it and how strong are they? Raiga, what is that brat saying is the student for Anko coming, Zabuza said, appearing next to him. Yes it seems so and Renmara says he is strong. Zabuza scoffed. This little brat isn't that strong, he is probably just as strong as that Uchiha. While on the inside he is not having the same conversation. This must be the brat Haku was so worried about who could fly and make 20 feet waves, if so we are in trouble. Meanwhile Naruto could be seen speeding through the trees and sparks could be seen jumping off his body. Tazuna's house Tsunami could be seen waking up with a red face remembering what had happened before she passed out. Naruto-kun was so dominant over me I is he really going to have with me when he gets back. She shakes her head but a part of her hopes he does because she would be lying if she said she didn't want him to take her to her room and just have his way with her. No 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 d don't think like that we have better things to do other than to think about how Naruto-kun will stick his no s stop at Tsunami. She walks off to check on the kids to see what they were doing. They were playing cards and it looked like Rukia was winning if the smirk on her face was anything to go by. The two had become close friends over the week once Inari had stopped acting like an emo. They were all stopped at doing whatever they were doing when the front door was kicked in and two thugs walked in with matching grins and weapons out ready to use them. Alright, Tsunami just come with us and we will leave these little brats alive. The thug with a purple beanie says with a katana out and walks over to her only to be stopped when a girl gets in the way. I will not let you have her. I was trusted to keep this place safe from harm. Rukia says getting in a stance with her wooden sword at the ready and ice cold eyes she copied from her papa. Rukia Chan you don't have to do this. I will go and no one will be hurt, Tsunami says trying to walk in front of Rukia only to be stopped by Inari who gets in front of her shakily. Rukia is our right, we won't let you take her. Inari says trying to get confidence. Rukia notices his shaking and tries to give him some help, Inari, in a battle the ones who get in the way are not the ones that lack power, but the ones who lack resolve. She shouts to him making Inari focus and also ready to do battle unknowingly making Naruto's shadow clone proud at her words. Little brat in a bunny onesie and a wooden sword thinks she's gonna beat me. The bandit laughs while the clones of Naruto are ready at any second but want to watch to see how they will do. Let's go then. 
Rukia shouts charging the bandit with a thrust only for the bandit to jump to the side but he does not dodge the leg sweep Rukia did which knocks him to the ground. Rukia then goes for a stab to his groin to immobilize him but he then rolls over and gets up. I wasn't going to hurt you too badly but now I'm gonna kill you. He rushes at Rukia's shoulder tackling the girl to the ground and stomping her in the stomach making the girl cough up spit and some blood. Not so hot stuff now are you little brat he then goes for a stomp to the head. She hits him in the back of the knee, folding his leg backwards making him fall enough for her to hit him in the throat with her hand making the man gasp for air. Rukia quickly gets up and kicks him in the balls and hits him in the head with her sword repeatedly. The other bandit rushes her hoping to catch her while she isn't looking. Rukia turns to see him coming, aiming his sword to pierce her in the chest and just when Naruto is about to jump in the way, something unexpected happens. The man is impaled by ice spear that is going through his chest from the ground leaving the man to wiggle at the end only to be stopped when Inari runs and stabs the man in the back. Everyone is silent at all the things that just happened. Rukia is looking at her hands in shock and Inari is also shocked he just killed someone. Clapping could be heard as a shadow clone of Naruto walks through the open door with a proud smile on his face. He then opens his arms to the kids and they run to him crying. Papa IJ just KK killed someone. Rukia says crying into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto. I also killed that guy. Inari says crying in Naruto's shoulder as well. Shush don't worry you too. You did what you had to in order to protect what is close to you and I am proud of both of you. He says with a kind smile on his head making the two feel a little better. Ah really, the shaken up Rukia says, getting her crying under control. Yes I also heard your little speech you gave to Inari little miss bossy pants. He says teasing her a bit trying to make them feel better. S shut up Baka Oto chan Rukia says, hitting Naruto upside the head making everyone laugh. But why don't you guys go round up the villagers and tell them to come to the bridge, tell them the waves make way for a storm. He then walks to Tsunami and whispers in her ear. I didn't forget what I said earlier I hope you are ready. He blows in her ear making her shiver. Goodbye guys and be safe I'm off to kick some ass. He disappears with the dead bodies. Bridge Naruto could be seen floating above the bridge just having received the memories from his shadow clone and he couldn't help but smile at what the two kids did and Rukia activating her bloodline. Alright I guess I can make my entrance now. He release his resistance seals for the first time in a week and he can already feel the difference in his speed. He then inhales and lets out a breath and lets out a jutsu with no hand seals. Wind style great breakthrough, instantly a huge gust of wind hits the bridge knocking all the mist away and knocking everyone one of their feet even the janin fighting who were caught off guard. Naruto kun. It's about time you got here we could really use your help. Anko shouts making her way over to him along with Kakashi. Yes Naruto. It seems Zabuza has called back up and we were having trouble fighting them in the mist, but thanks to you we won't have to worry anymore. Kakashi says taking this chance to catch his breath. Sorry about that, but don't worry, I will take care of the rest from here. Oh and Anko tonight I will be rearranging your organs and making sure you won't be able to walk tomorrow. Naruto-kun I can't wait. I'm gonna ride you till the morning. She replies in a Y tone with a little pink on her face at what he said. Kakashi, despite the situation, gets a little nosebleed. So Kakashi tell me what I am dealing with these two guys. Naruto says in a tone with all jokes aside and only a warrior spoke making Kakashi straighten up and also get serious. Zabuza is a, a rank missing ninja from Kiri and a master at silent killing along with being an ex-member of the seven ninja seven swordsmen of the mist. Raiga is also an ex-member of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. He is in possession of the Kiba blades which use lighting and is somehow able to predict our movements but I think it has something to do with whatever is located on his back. Thank you Kakashi, I will handle these too. Go and check on the Uchiha in the Hall of Ice Mirrors while you Anko go and move Sakura and Tazuna to a safe place. Things will get a bit messy and I don't want to hit anyone. He says in a tone leaving no argument making the two nod and run off to do what he said. Okay you two I am your opponent and let's hurry this up. I have a Y milf waiting for me to return and tear it up. He says unchevving his sword making the two swordsmen who know of that style back up in fear because all swordsmen who are worth something know about the famous moonlight sword and its style that was said to cut through mountains and lay the gods to rest with only a single stroke of the blade. H how do you have tea that blade a brat like you should not be able to wield something like that? The scared Zabuza said. Why yay it must be a fake I'll give you a funeral for even copying that blade, he shouts raising the blades in the air making lighting appear and strike the blades. 
Lighting wave he shouts making waves of lighting to race towards Naruto. Cute. Is the reply Naruto gives before smacking them out of his way to the shock of both ninjas. H how. That move has killed plenty of Jonin before. The shocked Raiga said with wide eyes. Wow. If that really killed Jonin they must have been some weak Jonin. A smirking Naruto replies, still moving forward. Let me show you how to make waves. Naruto raises his hands to the sky and faster than what Raiga did, lighting strikes his hands. Lighting wave. Faster than Raiga could move he is struck by all of the bolts leaving him panting with blood coming down his lip. Now that's how you do it. He sends them a smirk making them mad at him. Fine then I will just use my blade and cut you up, Raiga and Zabuza charge him. Naruto with a grin charges the two with his sword out. Zabuza aims a high sword swing while Raiga goes low to cut the blonde in half. Let's dance. Naruto jumps over them both kicking Zabuza in the back and Raiga dodges barely but still suffers a cut that reveals a boy on his back in a sleeping bag. A boy with purple hair that is long at the back but forms bangs at the front of his face that stop above his eyes showing glowing red eyes that look like the Byakugan. So you are telling him how to predict our attacks. Renmara are you okay? Raiga looks at the boy who is scared. Yes I am okay thank you. I think you will be coming with me, kid. There is a clan similar to yours in the leaf called the Hyuga. They will be able to help you. Naruto speaks to the boy. I won't let you take him. Raiga says, getting ready to charge again only to be surprised when his back feels lighter and he can see Renmara no longer there. Too late he is already gone, Naruto says tossing Renmara in the air making him scream only to be caught by a flying clone. Okay now that your little secret weapon is gone you will die first, Naruto says in a serious tone. You bastard, Zabuza by me some time I am going to wipe him off the map. Raiga says, aiming his swords to the sky trying to gather as much lighting as possible. On it, came the reply from Zabuza. Naruto then engages in a sword fight with Zabuza who is shocked that this kid is keeping up with him so he picks it up to Jonin level speed and strength, but much to his surprise Naruto is still matching him with a grin still on his face. He goes for a thrust but Naruto sidesteps and stabs him in the stomach, only for Zabuza to turn into water and Naruto is sliced in half. Ha brat was all talk he. Zabuza is cut off when Naruto turns into lighting and Zabuza can do nothing. Got you. The grinning blonde says giving Zabuza a slash across his chest. Damn Gaki, clever trick. The demon of the mist says getting to his feet. They then charge back at each other clashing blades but this time it is Zabuza who can't keep up with the blonde who delivers strikes that are fast and precise. Naruto cuts Zabuza on his side while dodging to the left, missing a thrust from Zabuza that leaves him open and Naruto capitalizes on it by slashing him on his back leaving a deep cut that makes blood gush on the ground. Naruto jumps back weaving a swipe that would have taken his head off. 17th Dance Twister Naruto turns into a spinning twister giving Zabuza cuts all over his body making the former Mist Anbu cry out in pain. Naruto comes out of the twister grin still on his face loving this battle. Come on, demon of the mist I'm not done dancing yet, 18th Dance Mixer. Naruto unsheds his sword faster than the eye could see. The next thing Zabuza knew was he got cut all over his body making him drop to the ground barely able to stay awake due to all the pain he was in. Damn Zabuza, can you do anything right, but it doesn't matter, my ultimate jutsu is ready. He then smirks at Naruto who is giving him that grin still that pisses him off. Prepare to die brat, lighting of the heavens, he shouts and aims his blades that are crackling with lightning at Naruto. Now die. Wow. He wanted to buy time for something this week so I could make a bigger lighting show in my sleep. Let me show this foolish man the true power of lighting. Naruto then leaps up to the blast and covers his arm in lighting something similar to that of Kakashi's lightning blade. Naruto then cuts the bolt in half and flies into the gray storm clouds and disappears. What, that is impossible. How the hell did he just cut my strongest jutsu like it was nothing? And where the hell did he go? Play Let's Do It by Lil Wayne. You don't have to but this song helps this scene. Everyone on the bridge stopped what they were doing even Haku who was in the ice mirrors with a knocked out Sasuke and a Kakashi who took this chance to get out of the mirrors with Sasuke. Anko and Sakura look up in the clouds and can hear the laughter of Naruto while also seeing flashes of blue. The villagers on the way to the bridge look up and see it as well, even Gado's men on the side of the bridge see it. The bloody Zabuza can barely look up to see what looks like a storm coming and he can hear the laughter of that blonde brat. 
Ha 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 prepare to see what real lighting looks like. Came the shout from the clouds and what everyone sees leaves them shocked and strikes fear in the hearts of the blonde enemies, Zabuza even faints due to shock and fear. Storm release dragon of the heavens. Naruto shouts and a blue dragon made of lighting comes out of the clouds giving a bone chilling roar and Naruto has a shit eating grin on his face at the look of fear on Raiga and Gato's men's faces. Now know the true power of Naruto Uzumaki of the storm release. Naruto jumps off the dragon going down at Raiga who can only stand there and take the hit. Naruto walks over to the place of impact and he can see that it left a huge hole in the bridge and not even a single trace of Raiga could be seen left. Man I always leave nothing left of my enemies, he then notices some swords to the side. Oh is that the Kiba blade? Well don't mind if I do. He then picks them up and they sparkle with lighting for a little bit. N Naruto kun t that was, awesome. Shouted Anko jumping onto Naruto who happily caught her. My god, that was easily as rank jutsu and I can see he isn't even tired from that. He probably held back to not destroy everything in range. He hasn't even used the chakra of the nine tails and he only has scratches and burn marks on his clothes. Naruto, just what are you? These are the thoughts of Kakashi who is shocked at the display of power he just saw. Clapping could be heard coming from the end of the bridge and some smoke moves to reveal that it is Gato and his thugs who are a little scared at what they just saw. So Zabuza you failed and they call you a demon who can't even kill some kids. He then sees everyone on the bridge. All right men kill everyone but leave the women especially that purple haired one I am going to have some fun with her. He gives a lustful grin at the Anko in Naruto's arms who has a scowl on her face. Anko Chan I am going to kill these guys really quick and then we can go back to the house and get it on. He gives her a deep kiss and a pinch to her nipple through her fishnet. Okay and Naruto kun don't take too long, the slightly dazed Anko said at the kiss she just received. All right you guys will all die now. Shadow clone jutsu. Clones of Naruto appear and they all pull out their swords. Okay guys let's lay waste to these idiots who dare threaten our women. They all rush into the bandits who charge with a war cry hoping to get some lucky shoots. What could only be described as a massacre is the scene the citizens of Wave appear on the bridge to see. One man but multiple versions of the man are all over the place slicing and killing the bandits with brutal strikes that they won't be getting up from. Unrivaled technique final, a large blast of wind comes from one of the Naruto's who delivered a straight punch to the air. Five clones have a group of the remaining 50 bandits and they are huddled together shaking. Galaxy split, and next thing everyone knows is that the clones seem to disappear and not even Kakashi's Sharingan can see them. The bandits fall, losing their heads. And then there was one little mouse in the trap. A bloody Naruto says with blood stating his black long sleeve under his armor. This turns Anko on at seeing how badass her man looks in all that blood. PP please D don't kill me I I'll do anything. Gato says getting down on his knees to beg. Money, women, land I have anything you could want. I want you to sign this paper which hands over your company to Tazuna. I want the code to your safe and the location of your base so we can take everything. Naruto says in a cold tone scaring Gato so much he just did what he said without even thinking about what he said. H here I did what you asked why you let me go right? The still scared man said. I never said that, you were going to die for making my daughter suffer and killing her sister. Naruto then throws Gato high into the sky and gets in a stance to attack. Heaven splitter, Naruto whispers but still everyone heard what he said. Then again everyone is shocked to see Naruto slice his blade vertical and up in the sky and Gato is split in half and even the clouds are split revealing a bright sun and blue sky. What the hell this boy could have killed me easily, so why did he let me live? An awakened Zabuza asked, looking at the blonde in respect at what he just saw. Are you kidding me he just split the ing sky, this is going to be one report, though Kakashi. Oh yay I'm riding him until the bed breaks. A soaking Anko, though looking at Naruto with lust as if reading her mind, turns to her and winks, making her blush. The people of Wave all let out cheers at what just happened to Gato and their now free country. They all run to Naruto and start to call him Naruto-sama and throw him in the air up and down making him laugh. Wow Papa is really strong. I hope I can be as strong as him one day, Rukia says. Anko hears what she says and rubs her bunny ears making Rukia slap her hands away from her head. You're gonna need a lot of training if you want to be strong like your daddy, Anko says, smirking. Naruto finally able to get down from the villagers, walks to his group. Alright you guys let's go back to the house so we can rest and party. 
he says the last part with a grin making all the villagers cheer and run into town. Hey Naruto. Zabuza calls the blonde, what is it no brows? Naruto says with a smirk. A tick mark appeared on Zabuza's head and a giggling haku could be heard. Why did you let me live when you could have killed me easily? He asked wanting an answer. Well if I killed you Haku-chan would be sad and I can't have that. He says removing the mask of a blushing Haku. What does she have to do with it? Zabuza asked with a raised eyebrow at the blonde. Well she loves you like her father and I can't kill her father now can I, he said smiling. This surprised Zabuza who looked at Haku with wide eyes who looked away feeling embarrassed. H Haku is that true? He asked with surprise in his voice. Why yes Zabuza sama but I will stop because I am only a tool and tools don't have feelings. She said the last part sadly. This earned a smack to the ass for Haku and a smack to the head for Zabuza. Haku Chan you are not some tool, you are a beautiful girl who just has a shitty father. He says giving her a charming smile making her blush while Zabuza got another tick mark. And Zabuza stop being an ass and tell her you love her too or you get the same treatment as Gado. He says grabbing his sheath making Zabuza go wide eyed and run towards Haku. Haku I also love you like the daughter I have never had. Please forgive me so I don't die. He says on his knees in front of Haku. Haku only laughed and helped him up. Zabuza sama I could never hate you and I forgive you. She says giving him a hug. All right all is well and good now let's go party. Naruto then picks up Anko in a bridal style. You ready to get your world rock time? He says smirking at the blushing Anko. Why yes I am now let's go. Tazuna's house the group arrives at the house with Zabuza and Haku. Everyone sits in the living room area. Naruto can be seen running upstairs with Anko over his shoulder who is giggling like crazy along with a blushing tsunami. Well I guess he is gonna get his mission payment early. Kakashi and Zabuza giggle like perverts causing them to be hit in the head by Haku and Sakura whose faces were red at knowing what was gonna happen upstairs. Upstairs in Tsunami's room Naruto threw the two on the bed and started to remove his gear giving the girls a show making them drool at his muscles. He puts up a silencing barrier and walks to them in nothing but boxers that do little to hide the monster peeking out his pants. Okay I hope you girls are ready. I will be testing out this never-ending stamina of mine. He says grinning at the two women in front of him then he jumps on them and the sounds of skin hitting skin along with moans of the ladies having the best time echo throughout the room. Next morning Naruto could be seen slowly opening his eyes to only close them when the sun shined in his eyes. A quick curse to the sun and he tried to get up only to realize he couldn't move. There was a tuft of purple and black on his chest then he remembered what happened last night and could only grin. It was his first time but he performed like he was doing it his whole life and by the satisfied looks on their faces he would guess so. He rubbed their heads whispering for them to wake up. Anko Chan, Tsunami Chan it's time to wake up. He lays kisses on their heads. No five more minutes, the half-awake Anko said. I don't want to leave bed just yet. Tsunami mumble. He could only chuckle at them. Well if we don't get up someone might walk in on us and you don't want that do you? Well I would get up if I could feel my legs. Anko said, hitting him on the chest lightly with a cute pout. Why yes I also can't feel my legs, the embarrassed Tsunami said. Well, I did tell you I was gonna tear that ass up didn't I, he says smirking, making both girls blush. Why yes you did but you were like an animal and it was my first time and you ravaged me like I never thought possible, a blushing Anko said. Well you did ride me like you said you would and let me say those melons were bouncing like crazy. Naruto says grabbing one of her breasts which makes Anko moan. Yes Anko Chan is right. I have never been taken like that before. I was always the dominant one during these things, a blushing tsunami said. Yes I thought it was your first time we would be able to be in charge. A pouting Anko said, but I don't mind as long as it is you. She blushed and turned her head. Ah no need to be embarrassed there was none of that when you were calling me Naruto-sama when I had you in doggy style. He says laughing at the red-faced Anko. You too tsunami when you were up on the wall. I had to pick you up because you almost fell to the ground. He turns to tsunami who looks away red-faced at how she was. Haha <laughs> okay let's get up before someone walks in and gets a good view. How about we take a shower and clean up? He then looks at them like a predator at its prey. And maybe we can have another round in the shower. The two can only shiver at his gaze and get turned on by it even more. An hour later and a couple orgasms later the two girls can be seen limping downstairs with bright smiles on their faces and Naruto is smirking like he won the jackpot. 
everyone looks at them with knowing grins except the kids who don't know what is going on. So how was it? A giggle escaped Zabuza as he couldn't help himself. It looks like you three had a good night. He giggles alongside Kakashi when they are both hit by Blushing's Haku and Sakura who mumble about pervy teachers. W we had a good night's sleep. A blushing tsunami replied limping to the kitchen. I'll make breakfast so we can get started on our day. Good morning Papa, Rukia says jumping in Naruto's arms, look what I can do. She then makes a rabbit out of ice and gives it to Naruto. Oh wow when did you learn how to make these? He replies to her taking the rabbit. Well big sis Haku showed me how to do it, turns out we are from the same clan and she is going to help me train my powers, she says happily. Well that is great, maybe she can come back to the village and show you how, he says looking at Haku who is surprised. I I would love that be but I have to stay with Zabuza, she says a little sadly at not being able to follow her new little sister. Haku Chan, you can go with him back to the village if you want to. I was gonna head back to the rebellion in Kiri and maybe help them out with all the money we got from Gato there is no way we should lose, he replies to everyone in the room. That is what you had planned all along isn't it? Naruto says, looking at him. Yes it is, I can't go back to the lead having killed one of its ninjas, now. But Zabuza will you be okay without me? I know it can be hard for you sometimes, are you sure? Haku says worriedly. A tick mark appears on Zabuza's head. I'm not some little kid Haku, I can take care of myself. Okay Zabuza I will miss you. She cries a bit and gives him a hug. Okay team we just have to wait until the bridge is done and then we can make our way back to the leaf and take some time off. Kami knows I need it, he finishes the last part in his head. A week goes by with everyone helping finish the bridge and with the help of Naruto's shadow clones it didn't even take that long. They spent the rest of the week having a town celebration of their new hero Naruto. He even got a statue made much to Sasuke's anger who was filled in with the details of the battle and he vowed to go to the council and make him hand over all his powers to him. Naruto also kept training and Rukia would train with Haku while he made Sakura practice with him who was starting to show signs of getting better by being able to do 10 laps around the whole village without stopping but still could not do all 50 like Naruto and the other Jonin could which made her sad but Naruto fixed it by putting her on his back and flying her around the sky. Inari had started to call him Oto-san which made Tsunami blush at thinking of having kids with Naruto. Kasumi had been a little distant with Naruto and it made him worry about her because she has never been like that. He said he would talk to her when he made it back to the village because he missed her. Bridge the whole town was at the end of the bridge wanting to wish Naruto and the rest of his team goodbye and all of team 7 and team 11 were there just accepting all the praise with smiles on there and Inari were also there. They had wanted to go back with Naruto to the village because they thought it would be great for them while Tazuna ran the village. Naruto had developed a fan club much to the girl's irritation. Okay goodbye everyone we will see you when I come back and we are gonna have a huge party. The crowd gives a big cheer at his words. Goodbye Naruto-sama, we love you, his fan club said, and he smirked and winked at all of them. They all start to walk off the new named bridge called, the Great Naruto Bridge, much to his happiness and Sasuke's annoyance. They all walk down the path answering questions of the curious kids and tsunami until a crossroad appears. Alright this is where I leave you guys and see you some other time, Zabuza said, giving a hug to his daughter who was crying but they are stopped when a group of mist anbu appear. Zabuza Momochi, you are to come with us, the captain said, walking up to the man. Yay so you can kill me I don't think so, he says pulling his blade off his back. No, you have it wrong, the war is over and we have a new mazukage, he said pulling out a paper with their mission on it and a message to Zabuza. He read the message and started to shake with fear at who is the new mazukage. Mei Terumi is the new leader. He remembers all the times she tried to kill him with those lava balls and shuddered. Okay I will come with you guys. Well would you look at that everything worked out just fine. Naruto said smiling. Now let's get back, I need some ramen. He then picks up Rukia, Tsunami, and Inari putting them in the arms of clones while he goes through a couple hand signs. Water style water shockwave. He shouts and a wave as big as the gates of Konoha form and he jumps on top of the wave making its way to the village at high speeds laughing the whole way while some of the others screamed. This is gonna be a crazy report. Kakashi cried anime tears at his problems. We can see the ever-present guards who defend the village with all their might and years of fighting those who dare to challenge their village. Azumo and Katetsu, man I am so bored I wish something new would happen. 
Kotetsu says drawing another card from the deck. Him and Izumo often play cards to help pass the time because on days like these it just goes by so slowly. Stop complaining. We have a duty to do for the village, we have an important job. We must make sure no person who wishes to harm the village can come in. He says placing down his cards for a royal flush with a grin. Kotetsu can only sigh and slump in his seat at another loss in his belt. You only say that because you keep winning. Pointing a finger at his best friend. Azumo puts his hands up in defense of his statement. Hey no need to play the blame game you just at this game. He then sighs. Where is Naruto when you need him, he always keeps this place feeling lively. Yay who are you telling? He has gotten so strong he even beat Anko and we can't even beat her if we team up. Kotetsu replies with excitement when talking about Naruto. Turns out he has always been a fan of Naruto's pranks and his new powers. Yay he will most likely become a Jonin before we do. Azuma replies a little sad at that part. Hey. Why don't we start to train again? Maybe we will be able to get prompted as well. He says a little excited at the last part. Yes you're right. We will start to train tomorrow and we will be able to kick Naruto's but in no time. The two high five each other at their new goal. But the two were stopped when the ground starts to rumble and they can see trees being knocked down in the distance. Anbu. Kotetsu yells, making five Anbu appear out of nowhere. There is something coming from the tree line and I can sense multiple chakra signatures. Squad I will get on top of the wall to check you stay here and wait for any attack that might come. They all do just as they said with them getting their weapons ready. What the Anbu sees surprises him, it is a massive wave of water coming this way. Everyone perform the basic earth wall and put in as much chakra as you can. The captain says jumping down and they all perform the jutsu. As the wave approaches they can all see it and hear the waves crashing and what sounds like laughing. Prepare for impact. A second later they are all smashed with the heavy waves and the wall starts to crack and some water shoots through some holes. Hold it. The captain screams only for all the water to disappear. That was fun Naruto-kun can we do it again? Anko says hanging off of Naruto with a wide smile on her face. She wasn't the only one smiling Kakashi, Sakura, Rukia, Tsunami, Inari, Sasuke, and even the now free Renmara who was stuck in a ceiling seal until Naruto released him. Everyone on the other side of the wall and even other ninja who had come because they felt all the chakra being used along with some civilians. They froze when they heard the name Naruto. Some were confused, was he the one who did all that chakra and massive waves? Haha don't you worry your pretty little head we can do it as much as you want. He replied laughing until he saw everyone looking at him. Oh, hey there Kotetsu and Izumo, how's it going? Waving a hand like nothing happened. Uzumaki-san, did you create this huge wave? The captain of the Anbu asked getting out of his shock. He wanted to take this brat to the Hokage and have him explain why he did what he did. Yes I did, awesome right, he says grinning at them. Hell yeah it was can I come next time? An Anbu with a lizard mask said. Only to be hit by another to be quiet. You bet you can, I'll even take you guys. He points to the gate guards who are shaking with excitement. Uzumaki-san, that was dangerous and could have harmed someone. I will take you to the Hokage office and have you explain your actions. Ma ma no one was hurt we just wanted to make it to the village fast and he used this to travel here. Kakashi says trying to calm down the problem. Kakashi Senpei, you were also involved in this. I must tell everyone how childish you have become. The Anbu then tried to walk to Naruto and grab him but Naruto pushed his hand away. If you want to take me you will have to catch me. He replied with a devilish smirk that scared the Anbu because they knew they could not catch him. I will not be in these games Uzumaki-san just, he is cut off when Naruto hit him with a paint bomb that turned his clothes pink. Making everyone laugh at him. Fine if that's what you want when I catch you I will cut your legs off so you can't run anymore. He then orders the Anbu to engage him. You guys go ahead to the old man's office and I will meet you when I shake these guys. He says while running into the village at high speeds the Anbu could barely keep up with. Will daddy be okay? He said those guys are the elite of the village. A worried Rukia asked Haku who only picked her up. Don't worry Rukia-chan Naruto-kun has told me he was able to avoid those guys at your age so I'm sure he will be just fine. Haku says, rubbing her head. Well we can leave him to have some fun with those guys while we go to the office. I am sure he will have lost them by the time we get there. Anko says starting to walk off and the group follows him. While walking through the village Rukia, 
Tsunami, and Inari are amazed by how big the village is and can't believe how many stores that they have. But they also feel a little anger towards them because they are the same ones who were hurting Naruto. When the group finally makes it to the office of the Hokage they can hear voices in the room and it sounds like a meeting is going on. They decide to go inside to see what is going on but are shocked at who they see. The current rakage eye who has blonde white hair that are in braids with dark skin. A build that is built for muscles and to grapple and throw heavy punches that will leave you in the hospital. Two companies with him. The one too is right as Killer B the Eight Tails Jinchuriki and has a build similar to that of his brother the rakage. On the other side of the rakage is a woman who has a more slender build with light skin and blonde hair that goes to her back in a braid who happens to be the two tails Jinchuriki. They all stop when Team 7 and 11 enter the room and a moment of silence is there until it is broken by the old Hokage who gives an awkward cough. Hello teams I see both missions were a success, he says giving them a smile trying to make the awkward situation go away. Yes Hokage-sama our mission was a success but had some weird things go on during the mission in my report, will definitely be one for the ages. Kakashi steps up speaking after giving a bow to the rakage, who only nodded recognizing who he was. He then motions for Tazuna's family along with Rukia and Haku to walk forward and they all are a little nervous at all the high class people in the room. H hello Hokage-sama my end name is Tsunami and this is my son Inari and we wish to join the village. The woman speaks up a little nervous. The old Hawkage can only give a grandfatherly smile at them which makes them feel a little better. Okay what makes you come to our village if I may ask? W well I came here to be with N Naruto kun. She replies blushing at remembering Naruto and how many times they had of the week. Hee hee I see so you are sharing him with Anko. The old man and Kakashi giggle like perverts. Oh Hokage sama, they are sharing him all right. Kakashi says hinting at what they did making Anko and Tsunami blush. S shut up you pervert. Anko says, hitting him in the balls with a red face. The old man gets a bit off a nosebleed at what he is thinking but he wipes it away. The rakage and his group can only sweat drop at what is going on. It's like they totally forgot we are here and who is this Naruto they keep talking about. Must be some lucky man if two women are sharing him. Okay we can talk more about that when Naruto-kun gets here. He says getting under control a little bit. Now what about you two? Looking at Rukia and Haku. Well my reason is similar to Tsunami-chan I also wish to join the village but as a ninja. Haku says making an ice rabbit much to the Hokage and group from Kumo's surprise. Hey old man don't forget about me I can also do that. She then makes another ice rabbit like Haku. They are surprised again at this because there are two clan members that could bring in new bloodlines. Haha <laughs> old man. I can see you hang with Naruto-kun a lot, can't you? He replies laughing at her name for him. Of course I will, he is my dad after all. Rukia says smiling. The Hokage stops laughing and looks at her in shock. Daughter, he must have picked her up on his mission and with how similar these two are I can see why he did that. But if raises her to be just like him oh my god this is not good another prankster and she has ice powers she will also be really strong. I need to find another successor to take my place or I will die from a heart attack with these two. He then starts to sweat heavily at all the things that go through his head at the possibilities. Hokage-sama. Oh sorry about that I was lost in my thoughts for a second. So you wish to be adopted by him I shall write everything up now. He pulls out some papers and starts to write at light speed so he can help Naruto and this girl. By the way, where is Naruto-kun? We need him to sign and give me a report, he says looking at them. Well the Anbu were after him because we arrived at the village on a wave the size of the front gates and they wanted to arrest him for scaring them and causing trouble. Kakshi says a little bit nervous. Haha this sounds like a very fun guy. I wish to meet him, where is he? The Rakage says laughing at everything this Naruto guy was doing. Well he should be here in a little while, you know how the Anbu can never catch him. Anko replies with a wave of her hand. Rakage sama I can feel a great power coming here and it feels similar to mine. Yugito says looking outside for the power closing in fast. Yay bro this power is massive it's even stronger than all of us, B says in a rare moment of seriousness and a little nervous at the power. Everyone turns to the window where they can hear the cheers of the crowd and cat calls of the ladies. They can see what looks like something is coming. Everyone from the leaf already knows but those of Kumo have no idea and are getting ready for anything. 
Ha 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 dynamic entry the shout comes from Naruto as he is seen coming through the window with a grin in place and in his blue armor similar to that of the second Hokage. I told those Anbu they wouldn't catch me not even when I'm on my deathbed would they get me. He says dusting himself off while taking a look around at everyone with wide eyes. Papa. The shout came from Rukia as she ran to him and he caught her in his arms while spinning around making her giggle and laugh. Hello my little snow princess is everything going okay with the old man? He replies, smiling at her still in his arms. He he yes and I called him old man just like you said. But Hake Nei Chan says I must call him with respect and she hits me on the head. Will you punish her for me daddy? Rukia says doing the puppy eyes jutsu on him with tears in the corner of her eyes. Ah don't you worry I will be sure to make sure Haku gets spankings for making you cry. He says giving Haku a smirk, making her blush and covering her butt. But she is right we must address him with respect even though he is an old man he is still the strongest ninja, after you kick ass dad that is. He says puffing out his chest making her giggle. Yay I want to be a kick ass ninja too. She says waving her hands up only to be bonked on the head by her dad. Language or no candy for a week. He says giving a stern glare making her go wide-eyed. A week no. I promise I won't say the bad words ever again. She shakes him looking at him with horror. Well I better not catch you saying any bad words, he says smirking at her. Naruto-kun you can do that later, we have other matters to get into, he says trying to get things under control. Yay no problem lord old man, what do you need, he says stepping by his team ignoring the Kumo group who are looking at him with wide eyes at seeing what he just did and how everyone is all calm. Rakage Dono, we will continue our talk tomorrow for the exams if you don't want to listen to all this stuff. No, that's okay I am really interested in this group you got here, he says, eyeing all of them. Hirazan nods his head and then looks to the teams and asks for the report and what has happened. An hour goes by and Kakashi is just now starting to finish his report about what has all gone down on the mission with wide eyes at what he is hearing along with the hidden Anbu and Kumo group. So Haku you used to work with Zabuza and now have split up and want to join our village, he says looking at her. A quick nod from the girl and he sighs. Well if that's the case you will have to go on a probation for two months and then after that you can join our ninja ranks like you asked. Okay Hokage-sama I understand, she bowed in appreciation. For the meantime you can stay with Naruto along with the new Rukia Uzumaki he said smiling. Making Naruto smile but Rukia was asleep. Tsunami and her son will also live with you. Not a problem but I am gonna need a bigger place with all these people. Can I have the direction of the Uzumaki compound? I know one must still be here. This makes the old man freeze and a little nervous and scared. And Naruto I, don't old man, I don't agree with what you did but just let me have everything that belongs to the clan and scrolls from my mother and we can call it even but come the chunin exams I expect to know who my father is. Okay Naruto-kun I'll give you everything. He then goes and opens a slot under his desk and takes out scrolls and sealed letter. Here this is everything Kashina sealed up before she died to the Kayubi. W wait he is the son of Kashina Uzumaki the Red Death. The Rakage shouts losing his cool for a second. Wow my mom sounds pretty badass if she was able to make you react like that and she also got a pretty badass nickname. Naruto says, smirking. Kid you have no idea, that woman was scary. Killer B shivered at hearing the laugh of the Red Death. Can I see a picture of her please? Naruto said looking at the Hokage with hope. Well there are better ones at the compound but I guess you can look at this old one. Grabbing something from his desk the Hokage hands a picture to him and Naruto gasps. Oh my Kami, my mom is freaking hot. The blonde says making everyone sweat drop at what he said. Really Naruto-kun, that is the first thing you say when you see her. Anko smacks her face in exaggeration. I can't help it, just look at her beautiful red hair and round face that just makes her look even more cute. Not to mention her rocking body and cup size. Naruto-kun you do realize you're checking out your mom right? Tsunami says in a blank tone. Well anyways Naruto-kun now that you know you're in a clan you will have to go in the CRA and I have to tell the council of this along with your daughter and Haku. The old man says a bit seriously. If they try anything stupid or talk out of line they are dead no questions asked. Naruto said dead serious looking at Hiruzen who tries to suppress a shudder at his gaze. Okay and about your bloodline they will also try to force women on you. It won't work, only I will pick who gets a piece of me. 
He then picks up Rukia and walks off to his house and the rest of his group. Well Hokage-sama, that is one interesting kid you have there. The Rakage said sitting in a chair. Yes and I can sense he holds the Kyubi. That must be why he is so strong and can do all those jutsu he said he did. Yugito says, speaking up. Yay yay ain't no way he's stronger than 8 feet o as a little brat but if he thinks he's good he can always come and mess with the bull we. B says rapping again. You have it wrong, he's never used the Kyubi chakra once. The old man says shocking all of them. B but why are they not on good terms? Yugito asked. He tells me they are really close, he just hasn't met anyone where he needed to use the chakra, so he only has fought with his own power. Shrugging his shoulders at them. Well when we get back to Kumo we will have to tell our genin to up their training, the buff rakage says. And not to mention he didn't even acknowledge that we were in the room. He is a little bit pissed at that part. Uzumaki compound we can see Naruto walking with a sleeping Rukia and Inari on his shoulders sleeping. He is walking with Tsunami, Anko, Haku and Renmara who have all decided to stay with him. So Renmara when we get settled in and they have the council meeting I will introduce you to the Hyuga head and try to get you in their clan and they will help you. He speaks to Renmara in the arms of a clone. Oh okay thank you for doing all this for me, he says a little shyly. They all stop when they get to a gate with a giant red swirl in the middle of it. He sees seals on the gate and rubs some blood on it recognizing it as a blood seal and the gates open to a compound in perfect conditions due to the seals that help keep the place clean. Wow this place is huge. He says looking at the massive front yard that has a stone pathway in the middle. They begin to walk the path until they make it at the front door and Naruto puts the key in and opens the door to a massive mansion with space enough for them to stick a pool in the middle of the floor. Holy crap this place is huge. Anko says with her jaw on the ground. I know, look at that kitchen. Tsunami says and quickly runs to it with stars in her eyes, making everyone sweat drop. Rukia chan Inari-kun. Wake up and look at your new house, he says softly shaking the kids awake. Papa. They both say at the same time. Yay that's me now look at your new house. They turn around and go wide eyed and start to run around. Rukia even walked on the ceiling making Inari pout because she didn't help him. Rukia ne chan pick me up as well, he says reaching out. She grabbed his hand and tried to pull him up. Little bro you are so heavy what have you been eating, she says struggling. W what I am not heavy why you rabbit brain, he says to Rukia. What did you call me fish brain? She says getting his face. Rabbit brain. Fish brain. The two disappear in a comical cloud of smoke fighting and throwing insults at each other. Alright you two you can stop now. He says walking up only to be hit by a flying carrot making the kids stop and look at their dad in horror. Alright you kids are gonna get it now. He then makes a water whip to spank them and start chasing them around the compound. Making Anko, Haku, and Renmara sweat drop. Well they can go and play, how about we go pick out our rooms? Anko said, getting out of her shock. Yes, let's, Haku said, picking up Renmara who needed help to walk. Once Naruto was done playing with the kids he goes into the master bedroom where he can see pictures of his mother and a blonde man who. Dot him. T this is the fourth Hokage. Am I the son of the fourth Hokage? He sits down on the bed in shock. Looking around he can see more pictures of the two and then see a pregnant Kashina along with Minato Namikaze. So my own dad sealed Kasumi Chan into me. He smiles a little bit holding the picture and some tears come to his eyes at finally knowing who his family was. I was born to be a badass. He chuckles a little bit at that statement. He gets up and walks to the closet seeing all his mother's clothes and his dad's cape as well. A little big but I can grow into it. He says taking the cape off. I will tell the group and those I trust. He leaves the room to go to the front of the house. He sees Tsunami in the kitchen happily cooking lunch. Rukia and Inari in the backyard training with Haku. Anko is on the couch eating Dango watching TV with her coat off leaving her only in her fishnet shirt with Renmara in her lap also eating Dango with a smile. It's what I always wanted, friends and family to call my own. He says a little more tears are coming to his eyes but he wipes them away and walks to the front door. I am going out. I will get the rest of your stuff Anko and also mine so we can get settled into our new home. Everyone smiles and waves him goodbye. Streets in the streets he can see many people giving him smiles and nods from the ninjas and the kids still smiling happily at him. It seems as if they are starting to see me for me and not Kasumi-chan. He frowns at the fact that she is still not talking to him. 
He is cut off when he can smell his favorite food and he goes over there to greet the two people who work there. Hello you guys have you missed me? He said sitting in the seat reserved for him. N Naruto-kun is that you? The shocked Ayame says a little pink on her face at seeing how handsome he looks. Oh hello Naruto where have you been? We thought you forgot about us. Sorry about that I was training and also just got back from a mission. But can I get some of that food of the gods? He says drooling at the food. Sure Naruto-kun just don't do that again okay. Ayame says, hitting him on the head. Sorry Nei chan I won't do it again. He then spends a little while eating 30 bowls of ramen and telling them about what he has been doing for the last two months. And to say the two were shocked is an understatement. He said he would show them during the Chunin exams if they made a poster and cheered with his new family. They agreed to it instantly, making him laugh. He is now walking from Anko house with all her stuff in a scroll and was now making his way to his house only to be stopped when an angry Kuranai Yuhi jumped in his path giving him a death glare. Hello Kuranai Chan I've missed you. He said smiling. She blushes a little bit but shakes it off because she is angry at him. Don't Kuranai Chan me. Where have you been, mister? She says getting in his face. Making him raise his hands. I am sorry I wanted to tell you I had a mission with Anko but it was an emergency and I couldn't find you. She looks at him for a bit before sighing. Okay that is a good reason I just overreacted a bit I understand. Don't worry Kuranai Chan. How about I make it up to you? He grabs her and pulls her into an empty ally and pushes her against the wall. Making Kuranai blush and try to look away. But Naruto grabs her by the neck and whispers in her ear. How about I rip these clothes off you and take you up against this wall? Giving her ear a bite and kissing her on the neck making her moan. Nn Naruto kun no w we can't de do that. She says through moans arching her back a little bit. He then starts to run his hands down her sides and grabs her by the ass and giving it hard smacks. He slides a hand in between her legs and grabs one of her breasts giving it a squeeze. My my Kuranai Chan you are all wet. You are liking this aren't you? He says smacking her ass again. He then plants a kiss on her lips making her eyes go wide at getting kissed by Naruto for the first time. She then gets over the surprise and starts to kiss him back trying to get control but is stopped when he picks her up making her gasp and he sticks his tongue in her mouth. Naruto kun I I, I like you. She says red faced at everything that is going on to her. I know I am going to have to share with Anko but I am okay with it. She already told me it was okay. Well that's good because I am in the CRA and you are gonna have to share with some other women. Leaving her shocked. I knew this would happen at least I can have you to myself right now, she says going back into the makeout session. Oh Kuranai can you now get a girl it seems you are a pervert. She blushed at what he said before she smirked. Only for you Naruto kun. She says reaching in his pants only to go wide eyed. How are you so big? You're only 13. She says, a bit more shocked. Well, I look like a 15 year old, and that means certain parts of me also look older. He says, smirking at her shock. Just ask Anko and Tsunami when you get back to my compound, they will tell you all about it. Why, you and Anko had. She says, shocked. Yup, and I tore that ass up. But don't worry, your time will come. He gives her ass a smack before body flicking her to his house and giving Anko her stuff, getting a kiss from her, and giving Tsunami a kiss as well. He left to go back to get his things from his house. When he was finally done with that he was walking back down the streets of the village when an Anbu appeared in his path. The council wishes to speak with you. The Anbu said and disappeared. I knew it would come sooner or later. He then body flickers to the chambers. Council chambers in the chambers all of the clan heads and the civilian members can be seen all together. With the Hokage at the end of the table and everyone else on the sides waiting for the Uzumaki to show. Hey there old man, is it already time for this meeting? He says standing in the middle of the room with everyone looking at him. He looks at all the civilian heads with a blank face, unnerving some of them until he sees Sakura's mom and gives her a charming smile. Because out of everyone she was always nice to him and helped where she could. This makes the young blonde blush a bit at how handsome he looks. He then looks at the clan heads and nods but when he sees Hiyashi he stares at him for a little bit making the room tense a bit. I have something to talk to you about Hyuga, he says in a neutral tone. It is Hyuga sama to you boy, he responds in a blank tone matching Naruto. You get my respect when you earn it, but I have discovered a child on a mission with powers similar to your Byakugan but his eyes go red and he lacks physical strength because of his eyes from what I could see so far. Hiyashi eyebrows raised a little bit at what he was hearing. I want to see him for myself. 
I will go get him now. He disappeared in a lighting body flicker shocking everyone. Only to come back a moment later with him. This is Renmara and he has the bloodline I am talking about. Renmara then activates his powers and Hiyashi is shocked because it is something that was only shown in the early years of the Hyuga days during the war in states area. When the Hyuga's eyes would get stained with blood leaving them that color causing a genetic mutation. H how that is the red by Kugan not seen since the war in states period. This shocked everyone because he never loses his cool and then they heard what he said and were even more shocked. Hiyashi what does this red Byakugan do that is different from yours? Asked the Hokage wanting to know about anything. Well there is not much on it but from what I know it can see further and predict movements like the Sharingan. It has the ability to see even more chakra points that my eyes can't see. This left everyone surprised and even Naruto and Renmara. Well would you look at that you are gonna be a kick-ass ninja like your knee san naruto says grinning at renmara on his shoulder blushing from the attention he was getting t thank you and naruto ni san okay i will take you home and tell everyone about your new powers he then disappeared again wow that boy is just full of surprises said shukaku who was up for once oh you know i am he appeared standing next to sume who was shocked at his appearance she was even more shocked when he picked her up and sat her in his lap grin still in place I can sense your arousal, are you in your heat cycle? He says in her ear. Shut up you stupid gaki that's not for you to know. She says getting out of her shock. He then puts his hands on her waist moving them up and down. No need to lie to me Sume chan He blows in her ear making her shiver at how sensitive her ears are. S stop D don't do that. She says, hitting his chest. He then starts to rock her back and forth making her rube against his crotch with her wedding folds. Do you need me to come and help you with your problem? How about I come over later and help you? He says till talking into her ear. She then gets up and body flickers to her house with her nin ken. Everyone in the room was shocked, the men had nosebleeds and the women had slight blushes. And Naruto kun back on topic to the meeting. He coughs in his hand getting ready to speak. Naruto is the last member of the Uzumaki clan and has agreed to be in the CRA to help his clan. He also brought two Yuki clan female members and one his adoptive daughter. The clan heads are shocked because they didn't expect for him to be in the Uzumaki clan. They thought it was just a name given to show respect. The civilians on the other hand were not so happy, most were angry and some wanted his clan's power. One stupid civilian member got out of his seat to yell. This demon brat is no clan heir, he is the son of a whore. Naruto got out of Sume chair and put his hands together and pulled them apart showing a scythe of lighting and made his way to the man. Anbu jumped in his way but they were put to the ground when he released some of his killing intent and they all fell to their knees and the clan heads also fell and the Hokage started to sweat. The civilians were throwing up and choking except for Mebuki who was only sweating. My mother Kashina Uzumaki was not a whore and those words will never come out of your mouth again, he says in a cold tone. PP please I I am sorry. The man said shaking. I don't care, you fools take me for some kind of joke. But you will learn to put some respect on my name. With that said he sliced the man's head off and then sat back down. Leaving everyone silent for a moment. Anbu take the body away. The Hokage said getting over his shock. HH Hokage Sama K killed this demon he killed Larry. A civilian member said. You see old man, this is what happens when you get soft and don't enforce rules. Fools like this think they can just order you around. Leaving people like me to clean up the mess. Naruto then gets up and does the same to the stupid civilian. This is why I told you to get your act together and you should probably start to train again if you are gonna invite the other cage to the exams. Because they won't respect you if you just look like an old man doing paperwork. This makes Hiruzen realize how right Naruto words are again and the clan heads can see the fire come back to the old man again and they smile while Danzo curses in his head but he takes this moment to speak up. Here is an eye, he is cut off when the Hokage looks at him and corrects him. It is Hokage-sama to you elder. Hiruzen says in a firm Danzo curse even more in his head. Sorry Hokage-sama, but we should put these girls in the CRA to rebuild the clan. Giving us more ice users. In an instant Naruto was at Danzo's neck with his lighting scythe ready to cut his arm off. Clearly you need some more convincing. How about I just get to the root of the problem, Lord Old Man? Not giving him a chance to respond, Naruto slices Donzo's arm off that is covered in bandages to everyone, shock. But what they see leaves them grossed out. 
It is an arm covered with Sharingan eyes that are open. Naruto throws it to the ground and burns it with his lighting. Damn you boy do you know what you just did? Danzo replied in pain. Anbu take his ass to Ibiki. The Hokage said and they did just that. Everyone just looks at Naruto. Now I think we all had a long meeting and just want to go home so let's wrap this up and go shall we? Oh Mebuki-chan I will be coming over some time to help Sakura-chan with her training. So she has finally apologized to you, I am so glad, she said giving. Him a hug. Well see you guys some other time. He wraps his black trench coat with the orange flames on the bottom around him and disappears in a water tornado. That boy is so troublesome. Came the reply from the Nara head. Everyone can only nod. Uzumaki compound. Hey guys I am back. Naruto appears at the front door taking off his sandals. Hello Naruto-kun. Anko, Kuranai, Haku, Tsunami, and Kuranai replied at the same time. Hey Papa. Rukia and Inari say jumping on Naruto. Welcome back Ni-san. Renmara said, waving on the couch. He could only smile at his welcome party. Who is ready for dinner? He shouts getting excited from everyone. The Uzumaki compound was once again filled with laughter and joy. Naruto can be seen wearing a white t-shirt with black pants with foxes on them. He was in the forest he called his mind looking for none other than Kasumi who has not been talking to him for days. Where is she? You would think it would be easy to see a giant fox in the forest. Maybe she is in her human form and is in that little house she made. He continues walking until he comes across a cottage in a clearing next to a lake. I will admit she knows how to live in style. He walks to the door to knock. Hello Kasumi-chan, I've come to see why you don't want to talk to me. He does not get an answer so he knocks again. Kasumi-chan why won't you answer? Still no answer. She hasn't been talking to me since I had, with, Anko and Tsunami-chan. Now understanding why she doesn't want to talk to him puts his head down. Kasumi-chan I'm sorry I understand why you don't want to talk to me now. It's because I slept with those two. Do you think that I would just leave you in here and never talk to you again? He still is not getting replies from the other side of the door. I wasn't just playing with your feelings, I truly care about you. We have become really close over these two months and so close I can even say that I have feelings for you. He can hear moving inside the room at his statement and he only smiles at that. I need you in my life, I want you there for my new family the family that I want you to be a part of. He can hear someone coming to the door. I also miss your really soft tails. They make really good pillows. He chuckles and can hear one come from the other side of the door. When he is about to continue he is cut off when the door opens and a crying Kasumi can be seen. Baka making me cry. She then hits him with one of her nine tails and sends him flying off into the forest. She runs after him with a smile on her face. I guess I can let you have that hit for making you cry he says in pain while being stuck in a tree. I am sorry Naruto-kun. I just thought you forgot about me and would leave me alone again. She pulls him from the tree into a warm hug and he returns the hug. He then pulls back and grabs her chin and gives her a kiss that makes her toes curl. I hope that can make up for it, he says smirking at the red face Kasumi. B Baka D don't do that again. She looks away only to have her chin pulled to him again and he gives her a soft kiss this time. I just couldn't help myself you are so amazingly beautiful I just had to let you know by showing my love to you my foxy goddess. This combined with the kiss made her pass out with a goofy smile on her face. Hee hee I've missed her. He then takes her back to her house and leaves the mind escape. Uzumaki compound Naruto's room Naruto opens his eyes and he can see Kuranai laying down on his chest with a happy smile on her face and he can only chuckle at how she looks. He then rubs the top of her gently, making her mumble something in her sleep. Even in her sleep she looks beautiful. He gives a kiss to her head making her wake up and give him a smile. Good morning Naruto-kun. She then gives him a kiss and gets up and stretches giving Naruto a good show. She sees this and smirks. You can look but you can't touch. She smirks Lee at him. Naruto then grabs her and puts her under him. Now Kuranai-chan you're teasing me. I just might have to claim you as mine right now. He says kissing her neck. N Naruto-kun I said and no touching she says trying to resist him. He gets off her smirking at the disheveled red-faced Kuranai and smiles. A good morning it is. He helps her up. Come on, we have to go wake everyone up. There are things to be done today. They leave the room and Naruto goes to wake up Rukia but he can see her cuddled up to a rabbit plushie he bought her. Rukia-chan, it's time for breakfast so wake up. 
she only mumbles and turns over. Papa leave me alone I'm a big girl I can get up myself, she say half awake. Okay, I'll just give Inari your breakfast since you don't want it, she shot up with a sharp carrot in her hand. Never. She then runs off in her bunny onesie, making him laugh out loud along with Kasumi in his mind. Kasumi Chan why don't you come outside and show everyone who you are? Um are you sure about that Naruto kun, she says a bit worriedly. It will be fine I am going to tell everyone about who my father is anyways so might as well tell them about you as well, he says with a wave of his hand. Okay Naruto kun these people are trustworthy enough to know. She then appears in a puff of smoke in her human form in a black long sleeve shirt along with orange pants matching Naruto. So you want to copy my look ha? Huh? I still rock it better than you, he finishes with a smirk. Shut it. This was the first thing that came to mind, she replied crossing her arms. Let's just go see everyone. I want to hold my little Rukia Chan again. They make their way to the kitchen table and everyone finds a seat and starts to eat breakfast. Everyone is having a good time not even noticing a fox lady until Rukia points it out. Um, Papa who is this with the fox ears and tails? Rukia said looking at her confused. Everyone then turns to the woman who is drinking orange juice like nothing is going on. Oh hello Kasumi Chan I haven't seen you in a while. Anko says giving her a friendly smile which she returns. Everyone I have some important news to share. This is Kasumi Chan the nine-tailed fox and my father is the fourth Hokage. He says to everyone who is wide eyed. Rukia, Inari, Tsunami, and Anko just give her a wave while those who are ninjas have a different reaction. Kurenai, Haku, and even Renmara look at her with a little fear in their eyes. T the same one that attacked the village 13 years ago, Kurenai said a bit shakily. Yup, that's me, Kasumi said, expecting that reaction. Look, I know you are scared, but relax. T that night she was under a genjutsu that made her react like that she is just misunderstood and plus if she was that big bad fox would she do this? He appears behind her and pets her fox ears making her purr before snapping out of it and hitting him with her tail. See harmless just a broken rib and a bruise maybe, he rubs his stomach. Naruto kun I have some cream, just let me put it on and it will be better. Haku says walking to him. Okay Haku chan. He then take his shirt off showing all the women making them blush. Make sure to rub it in real good, he says smirking at blushing Haku. Oh okay Naruto-kun. She then rubs it in getting a feel of his abs making the other girls jealous. Did you forget I can heal you Naruto-kun? Kasumi said a bit irritated at his way of teasing people. Everyone laughs at this but then Anko remembers what else he said. Did you say your dad was the fourth Hokage, she said in his face. Yes. And if I see him, I'd give him a dropkick to the face for what he did. Punkass putting the village before his son, he could have just teleported Kasumi Chan out of the village and leave her be, but no, the village needs Tailed Beast. Well, I can see why you would think that. Do you hate him? Kurenai asked. I don't know right now. I am happy and upset at the same time, feeling downcast at the thought of his dad. Well, I am sure he didn't want to do it, Naruto kun. I mean, he died so you could live, so he must have loved you. Haku says, pulling him into a warm hug. Yay but I need you guys to keep this a secret for me right now. I am not supposed to know until the Chunin exams, he said looking at everyone. Don't worry papa your secret is safe with me, Rukia shouts standing on a platform of ice. Rukia chan, how are you so good at your ice release already? Naruto asked, amazed at how she can already control it so easily. Hakune Chan says something about having the purest form of ice release and being really in tune with the spiritual aspect of chakra. Yes, that's right, she can even control my ice sometimes if she focused hard enough. I suspect she can be really good at genjutsu and the spiritual arts of the ninja life. Kurenai, hearing this, is shocked at how good this girl can be at genjutsu. I might be able to help you with your genjutsu, Rukia Chan. I am the genjutsu specialist of the village. She says with pride in her voice that made Enko roll her eyes. Okay guys I am going out and I will be back some time later make sure to lock the gate when you leave. He then walks back to his room to put on clothes. He can be seen wearing an open coat similar to his father but his is black with blue flames at the bottom. A simple black t-shirt with the storm kanji over his seal. Black anbu pants along with black ninja sandals. See you guys. He gives everyone a kiss on the head before he leaves. 
streets of Konoha Naruto is making his way to a weapon shop he heard from Anko was a good place to go if you wanted weapons and anything ninja related. Kuranai had also told him it was a good place and he decided to go over there and take a look for himself. Walking he can see a store called the Golden Leaf. Nice name don't mind if I do. He then walks into the store looking at all the weapons around the store and clothes. Hello welcome to the Golden Leaf. Came a voice from behind the counter. Naruto looked over there and went wide-eyed at what he was seeing. A girl about the same age as him, she had brown hair with two buns on the top that made her look similar to a panda and big brown eyes and a small build. P. Panda Chan. The blonde said walking to the wide-eyed girl. W. Whiskers Coon. Is what the brown-haired panda-looking girl said. Tenten it is you. Naruto said giving her a big hug and one that she returned happily. What happened to you? I was looking for you ever since you got adopted. Tenten was now more happy than ever, her Oni Chan was back. I was also looking for you but then I got put on a team and we were not able to talk much in the academy. Naruto and Tenten were friends ever since they were in the orphanage and he would always protect her from bullies who tried to pick on her for hanging with him. But they still stayed best friends and promised to be ninjas together. What team are you on Oni Chan? I can see your headband but I have not heard about you yet. Didn't you say when you became a ninja you were gonna save a whole country and then be Hokage? She teased him a bit. Haha <laughs> for your information I actually just got back from a mission to help save Team 7 who were stuck in Wave Country and for your information I did save a country. They even named the bridge after me. He said with pride only to be interrupted by a laugh. Yay right I bet it was all thanks to Sasuke-kun and all of his Uchiha power. This came from Ino and the rest of her team along with their teacher Asuma. I actually did. You can go and ask Kakashi, he replied to her and her team. Yes Kakashi was talking about how he split the sky with his sword. Asuma said taking a drag from his cancer stick. Just listen to yourself cutting the sky yay right, if Naruto did that I will be his slave for the rest of my life, she says laughing at that. I swear on my ninja headband. Uh Ino chan I don't think that is a good idea. Naruto was a bit nervous at how carefree she said what she did. Yay, Ino don't say stuff like that so free you could really be his slave. Shikamaru said wide-eyed at her. Shika you are not buying this are you? He may have had that really cool entrance but saving a country, she laughed again. You know what deal? If you were wrong, prepare to be calling me Naruto-sama in a cute maid outfit. He said shaking her hand grinning that made her nervous. The group follows Naruto as he gets Kakashi and makes him tell Ino that he split the sky with a swipe of his sword. Kakashi then repeats the battle to a wide-eyed Team Ten and Tenten who wanted to catch up with her Oni-chan again. S so I have to be a slave to N Naruto. Ino then faints at what her life just turned into. Everyone else could not believe what just happened. They then make their way to the Hokage to tell him and have her fill out the papers along with her dad who had to find another clan heir. I can still be a ninja right Hokage-sama? Ino said in tears at what is happening. He can only sigh at the girl. It is up to Naruto if you can still be a ninja now. If he says yes you can but can never be your clan heir again. She drops her head and turns to Naruto who is also shocked at what is going on. And Naruto you will s still let me be a ninja right? Ino says grabbing his arms. Yes Ino chan I will not take your dream away from you. He says making her give him a hug and to thank him. T thank you and Naruto sama, she says embarrassed. Well that's not all you still have to get a slave seal to show who you belong to. The Hokage says getting their attention again. A slave seal. Inoichi faints, yes it won't hurt but it will just be like a tattoo. The Hokage said like it was nothing. Well Ino-chan, where would you like it, how about on your butt? He says grinning at the blushing blonde. Only for Inoichi to rise up and try to choke Naruto. Not on my little girl, he tries to catch him again. Daddy it's okay it has to happen I am fine with this I will still be able to come see you and other things like that. Ino says trying to calm her over protective dad down. Yes she is right I am not going to make her some dumb blonde who can't think for herself. Naruto says floating in the air. I will make her a great ninja worthy of serving the new Uzumaki clan. And who knows she might get more maids and become the headmistress. He jokes. Ino chan come on I won't mistreat you or anything like that but I will expect you to act like a maid and all that other stuff. Come on, I will put the seal on you when we get to your new home. He then picks her up in a bridal style carry making her blush and flies to his house. 
You know this might be good for her. Naruto is a real ninja and he might turn her into something you can be proud of. The old Hokage says to Inoichi who nods in agreement. Well I am going to go tell my wife the good news, he says a bit scared of how she will act. Uzumaki compound a week has passed since Ino became Naruto's slave and to say she was surprised was an understatement. She was actually having a good time and training along with Sakura and Tenten who Naruto had gone to get from their house. Naruto had made her wear a traditional maid outfit when she was not training and she had to do tasks around the house. He kept to his word and didn't force himself on her like she thought he would but he did make her get in their personal hot spring with him and clean him. Much to her embarrassment and happiness at being close to her master. Her training had made stacking results along with the rest of the girls. She was now fighting Sakura to a draw on top of the water for four hours straight, but they still could not beat Tenten who was a serious kunoichi from the get-go. Sakura had taken to being a medical ninja while she along with Tenten practiced on expanding their jutsu some more because they both were lacking. She progressed to it like a fish in water. She could heal small cuts, revive small bugs, and worked on her strength training like Tsunade and was making good progress. Naruto had taken to training Tenten personally in his moonlight sword style and she was doing so really well because she was already good with swords but couldn't hold a candle to Naruto. He made her practice many weapons so she could find what was perfect for her, making her a true weapons master but she still had work to do on her jutsu. She was great with any kind of sword but she really took to a katana. He discovered she had a strong wind affinity along with lighting, with knowing her affinities he made her practice her ailments and she can now split a leaf and with her wind affinity and with her lighting affinity she could turn on a light bulb with her chakra only. He was the same with Ino by making her learn her chakra natures and she had water and fire. He was not able to help her with fire so he just let Anko do that while he worked on her water affinity. Ino was able to heat up a bucket of water with her fire chakra. She was able to light up a bulb just like Tenten was able to. We can now see the three girls in the back of Naruto's compound in an all-out spar and the rest of the occupants of the house are on the sideline watching. Rukia, Inari, and Renmara can be seen cheering for Naruto. Mebuki is nervously sipping some water watching her daughter getting beat up in this spar but is still cheering for her. Anko, Kurenai, Tsunami, Kasumi and Haku are all in medic outfits ready to run in and save someone. Sakura was sent flying when she was hit in the back by a shadow clone of Naruto that she did not see. Ino can be seen in a taijutsu match with Naruto and it was not going well. She had to dodge a straight from Naruto and tried to dodge other attacks but could not keep up in time and was sent flying from a dynamic entry. And then there was one. Naruto said pulling out his moonlight blade and getting in a straight stance across from Tenten who was nervous at her and her friends getting beat easily. Do you think you can take me on Panda-chan? He says giving her a foxy smile. Tenten. A bit nervous at the dominating aura coming from Naruto tries to muster up her confidence. I am ready and will take you down no matter what. Oh, does this panda have hidden fangs? Still smirking at her. Stop calling me a panda. She then charges at Naruto who smirks even more. Let's dance. With that said he charged her with blinding speeds, clashing blades with a struggling tenton. She went for a sweep to his legs but he jumped and used her body as a springboard and flipped off her giving her a kick to the face. She then looks up and can see an owl coming to her. Water style seeking owl. He shouts and an owl the size of a lion crashes into her, knocking her to the ground. She however had to quickly roll out of the way because Naruto was coming down with his sword. She gets back to her feet and went through hand signs, wind style wind dragon. The dragon lets out a roar and makes its way to Naruto showing it razor claws. Naruto only grins and does something really crazy. Grabbing a bow staff from the ground he puts it in front of him and jumps into the dragon's mouth and slices it up while moving towards the wide-eyed Tenten. She gains her composure and does one of the technicess she learned. Moonlight swordsmanship subtle slide. She says swinging her blade in a downwards diagonal direction. Only to be shocked when Naruto counters with his own move. Moonlight swordsmanship mountain split. He raises his moonlight blade in the air he summoned to him on his way to Tenten. Bringing down his arms he performs a powerful downward slash going right through Tenten attack and knocking her back from the impact that left a gash on her stomach messing up her white training GI Naruto let girls use. Correct your posture and tighten your core. You need more power. He said walking to the down girl. Don't worry that just means you need more physical training. Tenten pales at that knowing how crazy his physical workouts are. Oh okay Ni-chan. But can you help us out first? You kind of almost killed us. 
she motioned to all the girls passed out on the ground. Ha 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 don't worry I held back that last attack can split mountains and even the Hokage monument so count yourself lucky. Picking her up in a bridal style carry making her blush. Oni chan I can walk by myself. She says pouting at him treating her like this. Oh panda chan just let me handle this. Medics. We need some help. He yells to the sideline and they all come running. Come on ten chan. Stay with us you can get through this. Anko said looking at the deep cut on her stomach. Sakura chan. Wake up baby don't leave your mother alone with your father. Mebuki says shaking her daughter up. Mom. You act like I'm dying and what's so wrong with dad? She raised an eyebrow at her mom. Well you see your dad is kind of, kind of what mom? Sakura said looking at her mom. Eh. Naruto said helping Ino along with Haku and Kasumi. Yes that it your dad is eh. Hey wait don't say that Naruto kun. All she got was laughter from the blonde and everyone else. Sakura, your dad was not a good parent to you. You said he was barely home always doing some work which left your mother having to raise you by herself most of the time. Leaving you without a stable male in your life. Naruto says looking at Sakura getting healed by Kurenai who was also listening in on the conversation. That's why I have taken it upon myself to become that stable male figure in your life and who knows instead of Oni-chan it can be two chan he gives a wink to Mebuki who blushes at what he said. Sakura, seeing this using chakra to make her hit harder, punches Naruto in the stomach, sending him into the lake making a splash. Don't go flirting with my mom pervert. Making everyone laugh until she has to dodge a water dragon. So it seems you still want to train. Okay, I have some more physical training. To run away from the dragons, he goes through some hand signs and water, wind, and lighting dragons come from behind him making Sakura, Ino, and Tenten take off screaming. Look what you did forehead, Naruto-sama is gonna kill us, Ino said crying anime tears. Just shut up and run, Tenten screamed running away. All throughout the village the girls can be seen running from the dragons that seem to spawn every time another dragon was destroyed. Now that they are busy let me go through some of these Uzumaki scrolls, Naruto walks inside taking off his white training GI putting on an orange kimono with a red Uzumaki swirl in the middle of his back. See you guys in a little bit. I have some scrolls to read. He says walking to his room waving everyone goodbye. Now in his room Naruto will take this time to read some of the scrolls that he was given. So let's see what my mom has to say. Grabbing his mother's letter so he can read what she says. Hello son it's me your mother Kashina Uzumaki. I just want to say that I love you first of all and I don't want you to become a Jinchuriki like I was I know the life of one and it's not a good one if it wasn't for your father Minato I would still be an outcast being picked on. But this isn't about how hard my life was, it's about telling you about our clan because the village will most likely forget about us and treat our clan like the Uchiha. Our clan was great at Kenjutsu and sealing, we also had our amazing red hair. I have our summoning contract at the bottom of the page. Okay the Kayubi is coming back to the village make sure you stay away from alcohol get a nice girl you can love they will help you in life. Most importantly remember that I love you Naruto. Naruto was in tears at reading what his mother had to say to him. She loves me and I love her too. I just wish I could meet her and show her how strong I am. Would she be proud of me? Reaching for the seal at the bottom he can see a big summoning contract that had what looked like lightning and thunderclouds on it. Whipping away his tears he can see that it is indeed a summoning contract. Well what animal is this? It has something to do with lighting. He takes it and unravels it to see that only his mom has signed the contract. Cutting his thumb he signed his name in blood. He took some of the other scrolls and it was a bunch of jutsu for all the elements, but he sees something else that makes him go wide-eyed. I is this tea the flying region of the second Hokage? This means he must have had the Uzumakis help him with the seal during his time. He can only smirk at how he just got the secret to the move of his favorite Hokage. Hehe <laughs> man the Chunin exams are not going to be ready for this. But first let's go sign this contract. Walking back outside he can see that his might not be big enough depending on the animal it is. Let's go to a better place for this. I don't want to mess up my backyard. Taking to the air he flies to the edge of the village and an empty training ground. Okay now let's see what kind of animal we got here. Biting his thumb he runs through hand signs and slams them on the ground and a cloud of smoke appears. What the hell? I was in the middle of something important. Said a female sounding voice coming from inside the smoke. What then comes out of the smoke is something that gives Naruto stars in his eyes. So you summoned me human. 
a giant bird with three wings on each side and what looked like lightning in its body. A body made of gray feathers with giant claws and a long neck with a yellow beck, there are also three tails behind her. You are awesome and badass. I just feel your power. What kind of animal are you? Naruto says flying up to get beak with head making the bird a little shocked at him flying. Out my damn face human. The bird said shooting a blast of lightning hitting him. Ow that hurt you big bird, but if a fight with lightning is what you want that's what you will get, he said hitting the bird with lightning out his hands. Lighting palm. Naruto shouts, aiming his hands at the bird who was not expecting this. Shocking the bird and cooking his feathers a bit. Wow. That actually hurt unlike others who have hit me with lighting, he must have a strong affinity. Getting back on track the thunderbird shakes it off. How do you like that ya stupid bird? Naruto says grinning at the bird who was eyeing him like a prey in its sight. So you want to fight, do you? Fine consider this a test if you can be our summoner? Bring it on bird brain. Naruto then flies in the sky and lightning strikes down where the bird is. But the bird is fast for its size and quickly takes flight and shoots one at Naruto. All throughout the village people can see a giant bird in storm clouds over an area of the village and blast going back and forth. The Hokage looks at it with his crystal ball along with the Anbu. The Rakage and his team can be seen on the roof of their tower watching the battle in amazement at how good the boy is with lighting. Back with the fighting human and bird we can see Naruto in just his kimono bottoms because the top was burned off due to the bird and his hair had some white streaks in it while the bird also looked pretty beat up with some feathers missing and a broken wing from a punch from Naruto. Ha 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 I can still keep going birdie. Naruto shouts charging the bird with lighting surrounding his body to try and block some of the shots from the bird. The gray bird had a smile on its face after having a good fight for so long. Indeed you can human. But let's see if you can handle my strongest attack. The bird charges a massive amount of chakra that makes the clouds form around it and begin to circle it in the sound of thunder sound in with sparks flying out of it. Thunderbird style lighting beast. A massive bird made of lightning comes out of the tornado of thunder. Everyone on the ground watching was wide eyed and had fear for Naruto's life. This one is for you, Kasumi Chan. Going through hand signs and spiking his chakra dangerously making lighting jump off his body in the air to get heavy with chakra. Storm-style Kyubi Wraith, he shouts and a giant nine-tailed fox forms behind the flying Naruto who was huffing from the three-hour fight and massive chakra that took. On an unsaid signal the jutsu rush forwards towards each other laying out their own battle cries rushing towards each other with the roars of Naruto and the thunderbird sounding in the background. Naruto's hair goes completely white and he can feel an immense amount of power just rush through him and he sees his hair is now white but he shakes it off and pushes more chakra into his jutsu. Holy shit he is overpowering me and why did he just get stronger and is his hair now, white? Well whatever he definitely passed but I won't go down without a fight, she says also letting out a bird call that was heavy on everyone below them. The jutsu makes a massive explosion and a bright light flashes across the sky blinding everyone who was looking and also making them nervous. Out of the clouds come the two falling to the ground, making everyone rush to their ground of impact. When Naruto crashes, a crater forms with his body in it and the bird causes a massive shockwave when falling, blowing the trees away in the already destroyed training ground. Everyone makes it there and is curious to see what will happen next. Naruto mumbles and crawls out getting on his feet with blood coming from his face and his hair back to blonde. I am pretty sure I have a lot of broken bones and my chakra is as low as it ever has been. Still grinning with blood covering his teeth he speaks to the bird ignoring everyone. You still have more don't you bird brain? He shouts to the bird moving its feathers. S shut up you stupid human I I am tired you win I give you can sign our contract. The bird gets back to her feet to give its name. My name is Heiro the boss of the Thunderbirds with power only matched by a biju consider yourself lucky only Kashina was the last to summon us and considering how much you look like her I guess you are her son. Congratulations Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto only gives a laugh and responds with a foxy smile. That's right I am the son of my hot mother and I am also Naruto Uzumaki the storm of Konoha. He says the last part out loud making all the leaf ninja cheer and give him looks of respect even the rakage and his group have to give him respect. All that power but still he hasn't used Kyubi's chakra. Yugito thought to herself only to be interrupted by her perverted biju. Kitten is an alpha male at its highest. If I was you I would go and mate with him immediately and if you don't go after him I will take over your body and do it for you. Matabi says inside her host's head. Matabi. 
I barely know him why would I go and have with him? Though he is cute, strong, and has an amazing body no no don't think like that. She said blushing and shaking her head. You can get to know him and you see what he just did. Like that is not something everyone has. He is even stronger than me and you so I don't know why you haven't gone after him. The Hellcat says to her host. Blushing Yugito can only shake her head. M maybe you are right Matabi Chan. But it will take some time. Killer B is having a different conversation with his inner demon. Damn that fox really has claws to law down. He even beat Big Bird and got a contract. B said rapping. B that boy is really powerful and he still has not used any powers from the Kyubi yet. I just know when he gets older no one will stand with him. You should try to get an alliance with him. Man I hear ya no need to threaten, he play with the bull and he gets stung like a bee. Naruto however is ignoring all of this and is having his own thoughts on what is going on. What was that power that turned my hair white and gave me such power? It was amazing. It wasn't. T Kasumi Chan power, so what was it? Oh well it will have to wait until I wake up. He then passes out while staying on his feet, shocking everyone. Naruto kun even when you are down and out you still stand on your own two feet your parents would be proud. The Hokage says to walk to him to take him to the hospital and get him treated. Naruto sama it is time to wake up, your bath is ready. Came the voice of Ino in the doorway. Over the month she has really gotten into the role of being Naruto's housemaid and if she was being honest with herself she really did enjoy it. He treated her nicely, she was able to bathe him, cook for him and most importantly he was training her and she was really good and no longer a fangirl. Ino chan, five more minutes please. Naruto mumbled under the sheets. You know we have the chunin exams tomorrow and you said you would take us to get new clothes and weapons for the exam. Ino said a bit childishly at her master. Fine I guess I can do that. You do deserve a reward for all your hard work or would you like something else? He said the last part giving her a wink. Getting what he said she blushes, and Naruto sama d don't say such things it is improper so early in the morning now hurry your water will get cold. She hurried away before he could say anything. Okay Haku chan you can come out now. Haku pops her head from under the covers with a red face at what she was doing. Naruto kun, why did you push my head under the covers? She says blushing and looking away a bit. He grabbed her and pulled her into a kiss. Well you know how Ino can be when seeing things like this she wants to tease and tell the whole village. Haku nodes know how Ino is a gossip queen. And if what I was feeling between my legs you did not seem to mind. He smirked at her. Over the month Naruto and the women have gotten closer and more intimate with each other, all being his girlfriends and maybe future wives of the Uzumaki. S shut up Naruto-kun. She gives him a quick kiss, now go, your bath is ready. Maybe we will all come join you. Haku walked out of the room with a little sway in her hips. Haha it seems Anko and Kasumi are rubbing off on everyone. With their flirty ways I just hope Rukia does not become like them. I don't want to have to kill some boy trying to get his hands on my daughter. He laughs again at that though. Who am I kidding? My baby can handle herself with those ice powers and that new sword of hers. Getting out of bed he walks into the halls of the compound making his way to the bathroom and getting in his bath that was ready for him. Along his way Renmaru was walking to the kitchen with Rukia and Inari. Along with him and his girls the kids had also become really close to each other like siblings. They even helped Renmaru be able to get healthy again and now he was also able to train with everyone. Going into the bathroom he can already see the girls in the bath even Kasumi who was soaking her tails as she put it with her limited access she had to be out of the seal. So Naruto-kun what will you be getting the girls today? Kuranai asked sitting next to him in the huge bath that looked like an indoor hot spring. Tsunami was floating on the tail of Kasumi. Ye Ten Chan, Sakura Chan, and Ino Chan looked very happy to see what you would get them considering how much progress they have made. Anko said floating in the bath. Yes you are right they have made amazing progress more than I thought possible. He then thinks of how much stronger the girls have become with the practice they have done. Ino was no longer a fangirl now she was a scary maid who was deadly with extendable bow staff she had in a seal on her wrist. She had also learned a little bit of medical jutsu enough to fix any immediate damage someone would receive. She was an expert at medium to close range combat only being beaten by Sakura close range combat and tanky along with the massive damage she could do. She was able to beat Shikamaru and Choji with no difficulty and even made Asuma had to try a bit harder to beat her but he never escaped without any injuries. Tenten had also gotten really excellent with the Moonlight Sword style, 
able to perform the first ten dances perfectly and a couple of techniques without her blade. She had also expanded her arsenal of weapons and now can say she mastered all weapons along with multiple jutsu for her wind and lighting affinity without hand signs which he made them all practice. Her sword place was something serious even beating the Anbu and other ninja in the village who could use swords but still could not beat Yugo or Naruto which made her a bit sad but she got over it and just practiced more. Sakura had made the most progress considering she actually started from nothing and was now a scary kunoichi which the village would often call a mini tsunade but never say it to her face in fear of ending up in the hospital. She had mastered how to do tsunade super strength but not able to her level of power but can still cause craters and run through steel doors with just her fist. She tried to learn the seal that tsunade has on her forehead but she couldn't do it yet. Unlike Tsunade she had a fighting style called Byakuren Kaiken that they found in the library and focused on full contact sparring which involved using every part of the body as a weapon. This often left Naruto with broken bones but because he and everyone was wearing gravity seals that improved body durability he was often able to take direct hits and give some of his own back. That does not mean he neglected his own training. Oh no it seems he only got more training along with the extra missions he and Anko would go on. He discovered the transformation he did during his fight with Heiro was part of his bloodline and he called it God Speed and when in the form his body is enhanced and he can move at the speeds faster than lighting that often had him running into building and crashing not able to control the power all the way yet. While in the form his jutsu are all buffed and he can control his bloodline with ease and perform lighting, wind, and water jutsu without hand signs causing his storm release to be even stronger. He even tried to remove the seal so Kasumi could stay out as long as she wanted which led to him meeting his father which was interesting. Flashback. Kasumi-chan I am going to try and take this seal off the rock and maybe you can stay out longer and I can use more of your power because now all I can do is four tails, but you said I need some key and face my darker self whatever that means. Your darker half is made up of all your negative emotions and hate. He will most likely appear when you try to use my power and have to face all of my hate and yours. Kasumi says sitting in a chair watching Naruto go to the rock wear the seal. Well I wish he would just come on out and make things easier for both of us. But whatever let's just get that stupid seal off now. Peeling the corner off his hand is caught by someone he did not think to ever see and makes Kasumi really heated in her chair. Hey no need to do that. The man said completely calm until he noticed where he was. Hey where is the Kyubi and why are we in a forest? Dad. What the hell are you doing in my damn head? Naruto asked with wide eyes. Hello there son. Minato said with a smile. Only to be surprised when he is kicked in the face by his son. Damn I know I had my guard down but I still did not see him move. Has he really gotten this strong well I should not be surprised I was watching after all. I guess I deserve that for what I did but are you done now? Minato said getting back on his feet. Yes I am but I want to punch your face in some more but I will let it go if you tell me how to do your flying ragin. I used to notes of Tobarama but yours is still better he said reluctantly. Minato only smirked at what he heard. I'm sorry I didn't hear that, can you say it again? It sounded like you said I was the best Hokage. Minato smiling eating this up at knowing his son like the second more than him. Naruto got a tick mark at his dad trying to tease him a little blush came to his face at what he was about to say. I, I said you were the best H Hokage and I would like your notes on flying Raijin. Kasumi couldn't believe what she was seeing. Naruto was blushing and stuttering for the first time since he was training with Anko for the team placements. Oh my god wait until I tell everyone about this. And why are they ignoring me? I am the Kyubi. Minato could only laugh at how his son is acting because he was able to see how prideful his son was and he just had to poke fun at him. Wow the powerful storm of Konoha asking his dear dad for a jutsu and saying how cool he is. Naruto's face turned red with anger and embarrassment and sparks jumped off his body along with the wind picking up along with the water getting aggressive. Uh oh that yellow bastard is in trouble now. Kasumi said running into her house and bunkering up. Minato saw all that was going on and could only gulp and start to sweat at this. Maybe I bit off more than I could chew, he will probably want to fight me and with that speed of his he will be able to keep up with me but his speed is not instant mine is. Minato pulled out some of his kanai and got in a stance with his special kanai in front of him. Naruto seeing this gave Minato a predatory grin that unnerved Minato a bit because he saw the image of a thunderbird behind Naruto. Okay dad. Why don't we have some father and son bonding time? Naruto then transforms into his incomplete god speed mode which makes his hair spike out and turn white. 
He then just stood straight up, not giving anything away about his fighting style which helped him remain unpredictable. Kasumi was in her house watching along with the other foxes she had made in her mindscape to keep her company and they all were watching from her window. Are you guys ready? This fight will most likely be the greatest fight we see. All the foxes nod to her and look back at the two. Naruto and Minato were just eyeing each other down with their own battle faces on. Minato is giving Naruto a calm gaze with the wind from Naruto blowing his hair and cape around him giving nothing away. While Naruto is grinning like crazy with his blue battle armor that he decided to put on for the intense fight to come with the lightning jumping off it making his eyes seem to glow a bright blue. A bolt of lightning can be seen coming down seemingly in slow motion in the background building the anticipation of the fight even more. When the bolt strikes the ground everything around them seems to freeze while the two of them disappear in their own flashes. Minato's being yellow while Naruto's was a light blue flash the color of the sky. They then appear in a clash of kanai in the middle in the field with time still staying still and their eyes locked. Naruto phased behind Minato with a hand cased in lightning. Think how Goku Black does, ready to split Minato down the shoulder. Minato then disappears in a flash of yellow to a kanai on the ground then flashes back to the kanai floating in the air where he used to be with a Rasengan in hand ready to hit Naruto in the gut only to be shocked when Naruto also disappeared with a blue flash. That must be the flying region of the second Hokage, I can see it as fast but slower than mine. He will most likely only use his natural speed, which is faster than I from Kumo. Son, I am very proud of you. The two then disappear in flashes all over the mindscape causing explosions and mini earthquakes to happen all over the mindscape. They then appear back where they started in the same positions as they started only with differences. Minato was sporting a nasty bruise on his left cheek he received from a hook from his son along with a busted lip. His cape also had cuts that were also on his body due to Naruto wind covered fist and kanai. Naruto's blue battle armor he had put on also had a hole where his stomach is from the Rasengan he had been hit with is located along with cracks and cuts from all the kanai coated in wind he had taken and punches his skinny dad through with chakra enhanced punches. Time seems to resume again for everyone else and to say Kasumi was shocked as an understatement she could not follow them at all and then all the damage that has been done to the area is also a statement to how hard they are going at it. Wow son it seems you are pretty fast after all. Minato smirked. You are just an old man whose bones can't keep up anymore. Naruto replied, smirking giving Minato a tick mark at the old comment. Okay then young blood try to keep up now. Disappearing in a flash of yellow giving Naruto a kick to the back hitting him through the surrounding trees. Naruto flying through trees can only think to himself. Man, my dad is really badass. I can't wait till I get to his level. Maybe I should try to use Kasumi Chan's chakra no. I must prove to my dad that I can battle on my own two feet before I ask for her chakra. Making whips of lightning come out of his back and catch on to the trees he gets into a catapult position and then blast off in a streak of blue electricity. Minato seeing a blue source of power make its way towards him, only smiles. Naruto slams into Minato with his fist extended and Minato tries to block but is sent away from his son being stronger than he is. Damn he hits like Kashina Chan when she is angry. Flashing back to his son and engaging in a heated taijutsu battle. Minato is in a bad spot, he should have known he can't beat his son in taijutsu. He just can't hit hard enough to hurt his son for long enough for him to get a combo started. Minato is dodging a rapid barrage of fists from Naruto who then catches Minato in the stomach with a feint. Naruto then follows up with a combo of fist to the gut of his father whose eyes roll the back of his head for a second. Only to snap back when he is hit with an uppercut that sends him in the air. Naruto following his father in the air comes down with a move he learned from little sister Sakura. Heavenly foot of pain. Naruto then drops down with heel drop to his father's gut and it sends him to the ground causing a crater to form from the impact bad idea to face him in hand to hand he just beat my ass. Minato then sees he's fading in and out a little bit. I guess my chakra is starting to run out but that is what happens when you face your son who is a damn beast. Climbing out of the crater to see his son flying in the air with a calm face looking like some kind of god makes him smile. Let's finish this son my strongest jutsu versus yours and if you win I will give you all my sealing and jutsu knowledge, he shouted to his son who grinned when he heard what he said. Deal. 
With that being said Naruto then raises one hand to the sky and massive clouds the size of a whole continent form overhead giving off the sounds of a raging storm making the wind, lightning, and water to pick up all over scaring Minato and Kasumi a little bit at all the chakra and how huge that cloud is. I hope you are ready for this. Storm style. What followed after that is something that even had Kasumi scared because it did more damage than her tailed beast bomb and it destroyed the whole mindscape leaving nothing there not even grass it just became a white void with the three floating. And Naruto w what the hell, how can you even come up with something like that? Minato said wide eyed at the destruction caused by his son he had to flash away or he would have surely died to that. Naruto was a bit wide eyed at this as well it was his first time actually finishing the jutsu. He had only ever formed the jutsu but never finished it. T that was my first time using the jutsu and I must say it was absolutely awesome. He pumped his fist into the air and even gave Kasumi a kiss and whispered in her ear something that made her blush bright red and cause a bit of blood to come from her nose. Now dad I do believe you owe me all your seals and jutsu please. He held his hand out waiting for his father to give what he promised. Really thinking about our deal after what you just did. I swear you are just like your mother. They both laugh at this while Minato eyes some chakra seemingly floating at the bottom of the floor and gives it a wink and swear he can see a purple eye wink back at him. Okay son I know I'll give it to you and you can rest because I can see you are really tired after that one. Minato then flicks Naruto in the forehead, sending his knowledge to him. Now you have it but be sure to practice it well and also use the chakra of Kasumi-san because you will need it in the future. Pulling Naruto into a manly hug a father gives his son. I am so proud of you son I can't believe how strong you have gotten in the life you have made for yourself. Be sure to keep them safe and stay strong don't ever let this world break you. Your mother and I love you very much. He then fades away leaving a crying Naruto who is relieved that his parents love him. I promise to get even stronger and keep my family safe from harm. And I love you and my mother as well. Flashback over he smiles happily at that memory he then smiles even more at remembering how he and Kasumi had that night and how Kasumi couldn't walk the whole day. Yay I will get them some good gear from Ten Chan's shop today. Kurenai Chan can you watch the kids until we get back? No. I have a team meeting where I have to give my team the slip for the Chunin exams. She gives me a sad look. Why don't you bring them to Hana Chan's house? She is always talking about how she wants to see you more. Ye you and her mother have been really close over this past month. Are you trying to get a mother and daughter duo? Anko said, wiggling her eyebrow. Yes I would be lying if I said I wasn't feeling them. I just love that wild look Sume Chan has while her daughter is calm but also wild if you can get to her. He gets out of the water having been done. You girls be good today and I'll see you when I get back. Oh and Anko Chan don't forget to give me my Chunin exam slip. He then leaves to his room to get dressed and can see Eno in his closet picking his clothes out. He then gets an idea and grins walking up behind Eno who is bent over showing what is under her maid's skirt. Naruto then grabs Eno's hips and rubs up against her. My Eno Chan, how naughty of you showing me what is under your skirt do I need to punish you? He grabs her cheek and squeezes it. Eep. NN Naruto sama w what are you doing? Ino said red faced. You were just showing me a good show and I just have to show you how much I appreciate it. He then pulls her up to his chest and she is blushing. N Naruto sama w we can't I am only your slave. Ino says looking down. Naruto picks her head up and gives her a warm smile and she only blushes at it. Ino chan like I said before you can do what you want. I am not forcing you to do anything you won't like. He kisses the top of her head. If you don't want me to be like this with you I will stop, he told her. And no I just though being your slave I wouldn't be able to do anything like this with you, because over the month I have developed f feelings for you. She blushed at getting that off her chest. Naruto smiles at her and she smiles back. I also like you too even though I am your master and you my slave we can still be together. Ino smiles at his words. Naruto sama thank you. She then gives him a big kiss showing all her love and passion in the kiss. Naruto then kisses her back, picking her up and laying her on his bed getting on top of her. They continue to have a heated makeout session with each rubbing their hands up each other's body. The need for air makes them separate and Ino's face is as red as a tomato's while Naruto is grinning at her. W wow t that was amazing, she said stunned at her first kiss. Oh don't worry there is plenty of more where that comes from giving her more kisses and fondling her breast. Only to separate again. Naruto-sama, can we leave now? 
I will pick out your clothes and we can get the other girls and get our gifts you promised. Okay Ino-chan, we can do that. Giving her another kiss he rolls off her and waits for his blonde maid to pick out his clothes. Naruto-sama, would you like casual clothes or your ninja clothes? Ino said in the closet. Um I will go casual, we are only going shopping. Okay. Ino then goes in deeper and comes out with his clothes consisting of a long open black hoodie with a plain white t-shirt. Black pants along with black slip on sandals. After he gets dressed he walks out of the compound along with Ino who changes to an orange shirt with the Uzumaki symbol on the back along with grey leggings that show off her rear and tight leg muscles. On her feet are black tennis shoes. After they had dropped the kids of at Hannah's house who was overjoyed to see Naruto and the kids again. They make their way to Sakura's house and they pick her up, who is in a long sleeve red shirt with her clan symbol on the back. Red leggings similar to Ino that shows her firm big butt that made men stare. Black ninja sandals with little cherry blossoms on them. Okay now let's just go to Panda Chan shop and I'll get you girls whatever you want. They cheer and both give him kisses on the cheek. Thank you Nisan. Sakura said, thank you Naruto-sama, Ino said. Golden Leaf, Panda Chan we are here so just buy anything you want. Naruto says walking through the front door only to have to duck a flying sword. I thought I told you not to call me that in front of people Oni-chan. Tenten says, jerking her head at Neji, Lee, and Guy who are in the store. Naruto-kun. It is so good to see you again this youthful day. The ever energetic Lee said speeding to Naruto. Yes Naruto-kun how have your flames of youth been? Might Guy said appearing next to Lee. I have kept them ablaze every day and now, he paused for effect drawing the two in even more. They have spiraled out of control making a fountain of youth. Naruto said dramatically a fountain of flames forms in the middle of the store. Everyone seeing it are actually wide-eyed at how bright the flames are but none are as surprised as Lee and Guy. Lee. Do you see how our friend has made his flames appear? We must do the same until our flames are hotter than that of the sun, Guy said getting close to Naruto's flames. Yes Guy sensei I will work until my flames are a hurricane of youth and if I cannot I will run to Suna on my hands only, Lee said with fire in his eyes. Yes, let us go. The two then run out of the store doing exercise. Oni chan why do you always play along with them and their games? Tenten asked Naruto in a blank tone. Because it's fun once you start and I really enjoy messing with those guys. You are a fool, their fate is to be a loser and so will you. Neji said looking at Naruto in a blank tone only to be ignored completely. So girls, do you know what you want to get? Naruto asked the group of girls. Well we all talked about it and we all want something that is loose and gives us room to move around, Ino said. Well I want to wear what the Anbu wear. Their clothes are perfect for me. Sakura says walking to Anbu gear. Well that settles Sakura-chan. Well let's go try some things on. Some time passed with Naruto reading over notes from his dad and giving his thoughts on some of the clothes the girls were wearing. Neji was often there throwing insults but to his anger nobody paid him any attention. Sakura can be seen coming out of the dressing room in an outfit an Anbu wears but she has a red belt that is long at the end and often flaps at the end. She has black gloves on along with but no forearm guards or sleeves showing off her toned smooth arms. She had her headband on her waist along the red belt. Looking good little sis. You look like a real badass just have Eno cut your hair to your shoulders someone might grab it during a fight. Giving her a thumbs up that makes her smile. Eno comes out of the dressing room showing off her new clothes. Eno is in a purple trench coat with a black Uzumaki swirl on the back. The coat goes down to her knees covering a grey shirt that stops above her midsection showing her belly button. For bottoms she has a high black skirt with black biker shorts under that stop above her knee. She had bandages wrapped on her right thigh and a kanai pouch on them. Black high heel boots with a fishnet knee sleeve on her left leg. Headband over her forehead. Do you like what you see Naruto-sama? Ino says striking a Y pose for Naruto. Who can only stare and nod at her. Oh yay Ino Chan you look why as hell in that outfit, he replies grinning at her. Tenten comes out of the fitting room and shows everyone her outfit of choice. Tenten can be seen in a black tight long sleeve shirt that hugs her body which is covered by a black anbu chest piece. She has on the same Chinese style pants but they are now red with fish net pockets along with black ankle ninja sandals. Her headband was strapped over her heart. Panda Chan you look so grown up. Naruto says with anime tears coming down his face. 
I remember I would find you snuggled up to a stuffed panda at night and you would. He is cut off when he has to dodge a volley of weapons from the red-faced Tenton. I said don't talk about that. The blushing Tenton said remembering how she still sleeps with the panda Naruto gave her. Come on girls, run for your life. Naruto dashes out of the store followed by Ino and Sakura. An evil chuckle comes from Tenten's mouth that scares Neji a little bit because he has never seen her like this. So you want to be my target practice right Oni-chan. Out of nowhere hundred of weapons spawn behind her and she takes off at great speeds surprising Neji at how fast she was. Streets of the village, okay girls she will most likely want to use us as target practice so let's make this some training. As he said that a giant hammer came flying out of the sky almost hitting him. The two girls nod keeping pace with Naruto's running speed. They had long since discovered it was keep up or get left behind. They had to stop when three kids were in the way. Boss boss. The three kids yelled happily at seeing him. Oni Chan can we play ninja? You promised that you would play with us, Konohamaru said, jumping up and down. Yes, why don't we play dodge the flying weapons? Naruto said doing just that along with the girls behind him. Naruto Oni Chan, are they your, you know girlfriend? The brown haired boy said winking at him. Kono don't be dumb he can't have more than one girlfriend, Moegi said. I actually do have more than one girlfriend, Naruto said still dodging weapons. Along with the kids making him smile at knowing his training he put them through is paying off. How many do you have? Udon said, wiping his nose. 6. Naruto said catching five spiked balls out of the air. The kids then see a giant fireball coming and run away. Naruto then catches the fireball in his hand that he encased in water and puts it out. They hear the sound of the kids screaming on the other side and go to see what happened. You little brat that hurt me. I think I am going to teach you a lesson. A male sounding voice. Hey let him down, we are sorry we were running from a giant fireball. Naruto then comes from around the corner and can see a boy in a catsuit with makeup and a bandaged package on his back. There is a beautiful blonde haired girl behind him with her hair in four spiked ponytails and a fan on her back. Hey lady put the kid down he said he was sorry, Naruto said walking up to them. I am a boy. This makes the girl behind him laugh lightly. Shut up Tamari. The boy turned to his sister and yelled. Don't be yelling at me because you look like a girl with that makeup on Konkuro. Tamari yelled back. Look, just put him down before things get ugly around here, Naruto said. Oh yeah tell me what are you going to do? Konkuro said about to punch Konohamaru. Only to be stopped when he feels something on his neck and he looks to see it is Naruto with a kanai on his neck. It wouldn't be a good idea to come here and punch the grandson of the third Hokage unless you want to start a war. The two flinch at that which does not go unnoticed by the group. This guy is fast I didn't even see him move. Konkuro was thinking to himself. Hot, funny, strong, this guy is the total package. Tamari licks her lips behind him. About to pull off her fan she is stopped when she sees Ino poking her hand with her silver bow staff. I don't know how your friend in the tree will feel if I kill you, but he might be more angry than he already is. Naruto says, looking at the tree. A boy with red hair and a gourd on his back jumps out of the tree and stands next to his brother. Konkuro you are an embarrassment to Suna. But Gara, he, shut up or I'll kill you. Gara said, looking at his brother dead in the eyes. I am sorry for how my stupid sibling acted my name is Gara and mother wants your blood. He said the last part and blasted Naruto with some of his key and Naruto was unfazed by it, shocking everyone. Listen here you little raccoon you are not in your village anymore and that means you are not the strongest, you are on my turf where I am the strongest. You are the weakest of us nine don't make me have to put you in your place. Naruto said all this walking up to Gara, blasting him with his own key making him and the group in the trees watching scared. Once he was standing over Gara, who had wide eyes because his sand was not reacting to the boy and he was, afraid that his mother wouldn't protect him. Now I suggest you not kill any leaf ninja while you are here in the village or cause any trouble in the red light district or I am gonna have to come find you and kill you. Naruto said the last part with demon chakra. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, make sure you remember it. He then walks off not before giving a wink to Tamari who blushed a little bit. Uchiha I hope that you are happy now and will stop watching me. Naruto Sama, he was also a Jinchuriki. I could feel it when he tried to scare us. Ino said speaking up after they walked away. Yes should we fight him if we see him in the exams? 
Sakura asked Naruto. Only fight him if you have to but when he starts to transform and you can't win, just send Chakra into this. He handed them a three-pronged kanai that made them widen their eyes. N Naruto sama you finished this jutsu, Ino said, taking it along with Sakura. You bet I did, you didn't have any doubts did you? Oh of course not you are my amazing Naruto sama after all, she said giving him a kiss. Wow Oni chan you are now dating Ino pig, Sakura said trying to tease her brother. Shut it forehead girl you are just mad I have a real man and you don't, Ino said grabbing his arm. Yay right Ino pig he is my brother, Sakura said grabbing his other arm. Naruto could only sigh before pulling his arm out of their holds and making a whip of water and smacking them on their ass. What did I say about you two fighting? Not to do it. They said with their heads down. Tonight you both will receive 100 spankings. W what no you can't. We have exams tomorrow we won't be able to fight right. Naruto sama, don't be so mean. Ino said crying anime tears. Why yes oni chan don't do that to little olmi. Sakura said also giving him the puppy dog eyes. I don't want to hear it. Naruto picked them up and started to fly to his compound with them kicking and screaming, leaving a laughing Tenten. Haha, that serves them. Tenten said laughing on the roof, only to stop when she heard Naruto behind her. What are you laughing about? You will also be punished for shooting a fireball in the village, Naruto said. WW wait Oni Chan we can work something out right, she is backing away. No I don't think so. He leaps to get her but she jumps off and runs to the Hokage office in order to get a safe place. Oh no you don't. He runs after her. Hokage office. All the janin from each village who have teams entering the exams are located inside the room in a meeting with the Hokage. Okay this one is for all the janin coming to our village. Do not go into the red light district causing problems. That place is under the protection of the Uzumaki and one of our ninja who will handle you if you cause trouble in his area. One of the janin thinks it is a good time to make fun of the leader. It sounds to me that you cannot keep one of your own ninjas in line. The ninja said, smirking, making the others as well. That is not what I am saying. The whole area is under his control and the people hold this ninja in high regard so I warn you if you cause trouble not only will you have to deal with him but also the people. They are interrupted when a brown hair girl comes crashing through the window with a frantic look on her face making all the foreign ninja go on guard. Hokage-sama, help me it's him he is trying to give me spankings again. The girl said shaking the leader violently making all the leaf ninja look around in worry confusing everyone else. Anbu. Four Anbu drop down and take the girl to the ceiling to hide her already knowing what is going on. Hokage-sama what is going on? A sand ninja said looking around in worry as well. It is him who will come and discipline those who act up and even some of our brave ninjas have fallen to his wrath. A moment of silence for them please. All leaf ninja get tears in their eyes and look down. A blast of wind hits the office knocking all Hirazan's paperwork down, making him scream in horror. No. Not the paperwork. He cries on the floor at having to do all that again. Quickly all leaf ninja get in formation. We will take the fight to him. The Hokage barked out orders getting back on his feet. Smoke entered the room and everyone was looking at it trying to see through it only to see blue eyes looking back at them making some nervous. So you wish to hide the girl do you? Well in that case you all shall fall. Someone from the smoke speaks in a demonic voice making all leaf ninja run in terror. Those who stayed received the worst beating of their life. They all had been whipped by a whip of water and it hurt like hell. Sending them to the hospital. So old man you were hiding the outlaw this whole time. I think someone has to pay. He then pulls out the orange book of the Hokage and seeing it he widens his eyes. N Naruto kun come on, we can be civil about this, don't do it please. When will you learn that your actions have consequences? He then cuts the book up with his wind chakra making the Hokage fall to his knees. Naruto shoots a hand of lighting to the ceiling and grabs two people. Tenten and Yugo. Wow Yugo chan I didn't know you would help her. I had to and I regret nothing. The purple-haired Anbu said. Oh well when I cut up your book of swords and housewives we will see if you can keep that same energy. No leave my book alone I am sorry Naruto-kun. She tried to say but was smacked on the ass by a water whip. The time for apologies is over. Now you must face your punishment. He then flies off with the two screaming girls. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.